Hi, my name is Dr. Nicholas Lam. I'm the Dean of the ELM Graduate School at HELP University. I'm in charge of the ELM Graduate School that have two doctorate programs and nine master's degrees. The directions of ELM Graduate Schools is to focus on the experiential learning that emphasize on innovations and creativity. We want to make learning a fun and memorable experience. The focus of ELM Graduate School for the next few months will be a few key products. The first one is the FLQ Doctorate of Business Administration and also we have the FLQ Master's Degree programs uh, in three different areas. For the FLQ Doctorate programs, uh, learners with 25 years of experience can join us while for the Master's program, we will need 20 years of working experience and you can join us through your relevant working experience. The positioning of the ELM Graduate School will be focusing on the key senior executive market, including leadership positions and senior management in organizations. The reason why we are doing that is because with experiential learning, your experience will be very influenced and important in the whole learning process. And together with this, we can create a very powerful network for all our learners 
not only in Malaysia but throughout the world. So the main attractiveness of the ELM Graduate School is through this experiential learning. I now invite all the learners, not only from Malaysia but throughout the world, come to join the ELM Graduate School's experiential learning platform. At HELP University, we encourage our students to reach for the stars, to aim for success at the highest pinnacle of their careers. HELP prepares our students by equipping them with the refined soft skills required to function confidently in the highest echelons of power, be it in the business or corporate world or even politics. Toward this goal, HELP University goes the extra mile in educating our students on the delicate graces of fine dining etiquette, included into the mandatory General Studies or Matapladaran Umum MPU4 unit. Our students will get to enjoy our privileged relationship with the five-star Shangri-La Hotel and put to practice their training at the luxurious Lafitte restaurant. Good table manners are extremely important for business dining and entertainment. new home for you for the next two years three years all right you have come to the uh, right university you have made the right choice to choose the right course at the right faculty and you are in the right hands all right why am i saying so because we have produced many graduates who are who have excelled in many fields not only academically co-curriculum as well as in their uh, working life all right, so you are at the right place. So first of all, give yourself a big round of applause. Big one. All right, awesome. Okay, good. Now, secondly, how many of you are international students who are able to be here now? Okay, fantastic. And to you guys who are online, welcome to Malaysia. Something that I always say, welcome to Malaysia, truly Asia. Okay, you are here for a very good uh, cultural exchange. You seem to be excited. All right, okay. So welcome to Malaysia. A lot of things to learn, a lot of friends, a lot of people that you're going to meet, which is going to expand your network. All right? Are we together? Yes, okay. So we have a long session going on today. Please pay very careful attention to a lot of uh, sharing that's going to happen today. And to kick off the day, let me call upon our Professor Dr. Andy Liu, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Health University, to give you the welcome speech. Please welcome Dr. Andy. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. MC. I seek permission to take off my mask. <laughs> All right, uh, class of 2022, very good morning. And uh, we welcome you to your campus. And as what uh, the MC has mentioned, this will be your new home for the next three years. Now, we can't wait to see you define your own successes here, all right? And being a help student, it is about growing, transforming, and helping each other. The word help itself would tell you it is all about helping people. But I'll come to that later on so that you will understand what exactly is behind this acronym of four uh, alphabets of H-E-L-P. All right. Now, uh, if you have studied biology before, human beings have the stereoscopic vision, meaning it is this way out. So forgive me if I seem to be neglecting you, which I'm not, because I need to keep on turning my head left to right so that I can have 
eye contact or, or that, that personal contact with you through uh, the gazing. Now, every one of you has earned a place here. You have chosen help and there will be a lot, a lot, a lot that you'll be going through in your university studies. Trust me, this is going to be the best three years, two years, if you're coming in with advanced standing of your life. All right? Now, so therefore, in Bahasa, they would say, jangan takut, jangan risau. It won't always be easy, but the journey will be great. Trust us here who have gone through whatever that you have, whatever that you'll be going through. Now, 33 years ago, 33 years ago, so therefore I'm definitely not from your era. All right, because I, I do heard just now when the MC was asking whether we are all from the same era, there was a big no from behind. So let me admit I'm not from an era. 33 years ago, I was uh, playing a different role in the orientation ceremony. I was actually there on the other side of the fence where you are right now. Therefore, I understand the excitement in you, the happiness. And of course, there are many, many questions that are running through your mind. How would I be able to cope? Will I be able to find my new besties? Will I be able to follow through the classes. Would the courses that I'm taking be very difficult? How much hours? How can I score? How can I do well in my assessment? There are many, many questions running through your mind. I'm very, very sure. So it is very natural. Do not worry about all that. Take one step at a time. Now, university life, let me tell you, would be the best years of your life seriously many many people that whom we have met in our age group or even those who have just entered the working world they will always say how i wish i can get back into university when you are in the university you will be saying oh my god i need to get up very early in the morning i need to complete my assignments i need to sit for exams i need to prepare I need to do revision. That is part and parcel of a university life. All right? So appreciate every single moment that you have in the university, whether in the faculty or in the campus or in anywhere, where you work with your friends, where you work with your buddies, where you have fine new besties. You definitely have new besties. You definitely have more friends in these three years and this friend will be with you until you enter your golden age standing here i can visualize the look on your parents faces today all right uh the pride in what their son or daughter is going to do all right the excitement about your future now your parents or your guardians, they have uh, made huge sacrifices to put you through school, primary school, secondary school, and now the final lapse of your journey, which is education journey, which is your tertiary education. So the question now you can ask yourself this very simple question. How can I repay their love their sacrifices how do i do that the answer is very very simple it depends on how you perform from now on all right the only way you can repay them is to try your level best try your level best being a student of health university we are not asking you to score four flat every semester if you can then it will be great if you can't, you are still going through the learning journey of a student. All right, so enjoy the moments here. Now, if you see this in our website, it is written as O Week, which is the orientation week for class 2022, May uh, 2022 intake. 
Now, orientation ceremony is unique in a way because it is specially designed and planned to cater to help you to get prepared for your academic journey in health university. In any institution of higher learning, orientation is very important because it's an induction process telling you many, many things about the rules and regulation of the university, about what you can do, what you can't do, about how to have a balanced life between academic and your curricular activities. So seize the opportunity to get to know uh, new, new friends, make new friends. It could be from the same race, different races, from the same country, different countries. This is where uh, the Malay would say, menjalin perhubungan silatu rahim. All right. Now, as, as you can see, uh, you may have been given this orientation program uh, when you register just now at the counter. Now, we do understand there will be a whole lot of information for you to digest the orientation program. All right. There will be a whole lot of information for you to digest in a small amount of time. This is like asking you to drink or to take a drink from a fire hydrant. Imagine you switch on the fire hydrant and you try to drink from the fire hydrant, you will still able to take on some fluid into your uh, digestive system. However, we do understand this is going to be very overwhelming. It is okay, it is all right, all right? There are things you will remember from what you go through today. There are things that you will forget. Do not worry. This will be uh, given to you uh, during the course of your study. And there are things that will change your perspective on how you view university. All right? Now, coming back to this HELP, each of you here today has a different story to share why you have chosen Help University as your tertiary higher education institution. Now, as the saying goes, tak kenal maka tak cinta. At the very least, you must know what HELP is all about. Many of you will be thinking this is bantuan, pertolongan, in, in, in trans, if you translate it into bahasa help, no. There is actually uh, certain words that are hiding behind these four alphabets. So let me take you down the memory lane for a while, all right? Just a very quick one. At least next time, if your friends from other institutions were to ask you about help, you, can, uh, you are able to answer them confidently. Now, this is a newspaper cutting that was scanned and now projected. A newspaper cutting. Can you imagine this newspaper cutting is a newspaper cutting that we have retained from 1986. 1986. So this would mean this is actually 36 years ago. Now, when we say 36 years ago, I'm very sure none of you, especially the new students, you could be in other universe, all right? You could be a, a multiverse like the Dr. Strange. So what we are trying to tell you here is help is actually about twice your age, twice your age. So this is not an institution that has been established yesterday, two years ago, or 10 years ago. It is almost like four decades. The next one, the humble beginning. Now, our mission here, Help University mission, is to transform your life through education. So in anywhere that you go, you will always have to remember. <laughs> All right, it, this, this is like I'm hearing myself talking back to me. All right, because we are also streaming live on Facebook and, and other social media platforms. So over here, coming back to this, our mission is to transform your life through education. All right, your complete journey. 
it is a holistic development that we want to look at in you. All right, not about you being able to achieve excellent results, but in all different aspects of your life. Now, you see these two uh, human beings here. All right, this is like the Kong Kong and Mama, grandfather and grandmother of Help University. All right, they are the one, the, or rather the co founders of Help University. They were from uh, UM and they, they left the university in 1986 and established Help Institute at that point of time in 1986. And this is how Help University evolved in 2011. All right. So this Kong Kong and Mama, now I would, I would, I would say they are probably uh, 80 years old. They are probably 80 years old. In, in, in 2022. However, they are still actively working. This is about lifelong learning. The Kong Kong is the Vice Chancellor of Help University. All right. Then Datin uh, Lo Kam Yo is the group CEO. So both of them are still active. Both of them are still dedicating their life for all of you here, all right? So if you ever see them along the corridor, the face, the, 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 the wajah muka will not change much, all right? But this is definitely probably 10 years ago, all right? It won't change much. It will always be almost, the features will be quite the same, all right? So do remember these, uh, the, uh, so-called Samaritans or people behind the establishment of Health University. So coming back to this four alphabets, H-E-L-P. Now, H-E-L-P stands for Higher Education Learning Program way back in 1986. In 1986, when they established this institute, Health Institute, they coined the word Help, H E L P, and this is from Higher Education uh, Learning Program. That was in 1986. Eventually, when uh, the institute was upgraded to a university, then it becomes Help Education Learning Philosophy. All right. So I hope, being a student of Help University, if anybody were to ask you again in the near future. What exactly is help? Is it helping people? Is it Bantuan? No, it is more than that. All right. Now, the next one. This is the help education group. You are actually here. What I need you to know is that you are now part of the big family, the huge family of help. Look at what help has contributed to the nation, to the country, to, to, to humanity. It has early childhood education from preschool, kindergarten, from primary school, secondary school, international schools, and up to the tertiary institution where we have Help University and Help Academy. Now, Help University, uh, there are a few branch campuses here. It is in here, Damansara, and also in Subang and in Wisma Help. All right. I, I, I've been receiving messages that my time is up. I, 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 will, I will rush through it, uh, Vivian. So coming back to this, let me go through very, very quickly. Now, do not worry. Studying and help will not be a lonely journey. We are here with you every single step. But let me offer you these three simple mantras. Number one, as you can see in the slide here, you should get to know your cosmates. Form focus study groups, all right? Learning with friends can add to the fun and enjoyment of studying for the degree. You must do this in your first week of your studies, all right? Second thing, you should get to know your advisor, mentor, or lecturers. They are the keys to unlock the treasure, all right? They are your immediate and nearest contact of 
the university. Do not feel shy to ask for help. All right? It is something that is necessary for your success. Remember, help is your new home and your new family here. And the third thing, familiarize yourself with the online learning environment. Whether it is a learning management system, the digital library, or other learning support services. So your mission, therefore, is to study hard and to play hard as well. That is why you need to participate actively in curricular activities. All of this will make you a better student, a better person, and above all, a better citizen. Now, help has provided the opportunity for you to learn. Embrace this opportunity. Expand your horizon. All right? Acquire new skills and knowledge. The urge to learn must come from within you. No one can force you to learn. So it has to come from within you. As the saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I repeat, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Now, this is the finale of my presentation. You are here today in the beginning of your journey. This is one of your final destination. One of your final destination. All right? One of your final destination here. So remember, cherish every moment of your university life. Study and have fun and enjoy the orientation activities that we have lined up for you, all right? And once again, welcome to the HELP family. All the best to you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Andy Liu, for a very inspiring uh, welcome speech. Now, how do you feel? Now your, your battery charger has been plugged in, right? 50% charged? Uh, yes or no? Okay. Let, let me let me let me ask this question again. Huh? Is your battery getting charged? Question mark. Okay, didn't sound like a question again. Okay, maybe let me rephrase it again. All right. Do you feel charged? Question mark, which is to be followed by an answer. What's your answer? So my my question didn't sound like a question earlier. Okay, good. Now, uh, if you observe one thing that uh, our prof shared. This is the moment that you should cherish the most because you know why? 20 years down the line, you will be saying, my best moment in life was actually my university life. And trust me, that's what I say till today. You see, I'm married with two kids, huh? but I never said my most memorable time is my family or whatever. My most memorable time is still my university life because that's where I brought the best out of me. So trust me. This is the time where you explore yourself and get the best out of you, all right? Both academically and extracurricular activities, all right? So without further delay, let me call upon the next person, which is Miss Chong Weng Liang, who is the registrar from the registry. Okay, now, very important, listen to what Miss Chong has to share because she'll be telling you every single thing with regards to your registrations and finance and all those. To you, Miss Chong. Hi everyone, good morning, Hi. once again. Morning. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to be in a hurry because the fire hydrant is now switched on. So you have to gobble up as much as you can, okay? So we have a very limited time in order to do this. So welcome once again to all of you, those who are online and as well as all of you in this room. If you don't mind, I'm going to take off my mask as well, okay? Okay, what a relief. All right, we are. this is the joint orientation between um, Help University and Help Academy. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to run through all the services that we provide at the registry. So first of all, the registry uh, handles admission matters, enrollment of subjects, payment, letters, um, verification letters, confirmation letters, 
some online services, rules and regulations, and help fee waivers. So this is the list of all the things we have to run through very quickly, all seven items. First of all, admission matters. All of you would have received an offer letter from the registry. So what you need to do is, if you have not done so, please accept the offer online in the student portal that is called New My Pride. Okay, and this is the URL. Okay, go into New My Pride, and you can see there is a section for you to accept your offer letter. Check your offer status. If it is a full offer, then there is nothing else for you to follow up. But if it is a conditional offer, you need to meet the condition. So, for example, it may state that you are to submit your A-level certificate or any other documentation. So, you need to ensure that you follow up by submitting the certificate as soon as it is issued. I'm quite sure the reason why you have not done so is because you it is still pending, right? Okay, so if it is a firm offer, there is nothing else for you to follow up. Now, all these slides will be given to you. Uh, they will be uploaded into your LMS, so there is no need to worry if you miss anything. Okay, the second item is on student card. So, in order to receive your student card, there are two things that you, two steps that you must have done. Firstly, you must have made full payment of the administration fees. In other words, there's an application fee of 300 unless it had already been waived. Okay, Then there is an administration fee of 2,500. So in total, you should have paid 2,800 in order to collect your student card. Okay. But if the application fee had been waived, then you must make the second payment of 2500 Right. And you must have accepted our offer online. If you have not done so, the student card will not be issued to you. Okay. Please remember your student ID number. This is your student ID number. And quote it in all correspondences. So if you should email to registry or to anyone else, uh, if you request certain things from us, make sure that you quote your name, your student ID. Okay, Otherwise, we will not be able to trace your program and who you are. Please wear your ID uh, card for security purposes. As long as you are on campus, you should be wearing your student card. Okay, moving on. Number two, enrollment of subjects. Enrollment of subjects is done online. Check with your academic department if you are not able to enroll. There is a specific reason why you cannot enroll. So if you find difficulties, so the first step you need to do is check with your academic department to see if there is anything that, is, uh, that you need to follow up before you can enroll your subjects. Now, enrollment is done in New My Prime. This is a URL once again. So please uh, go in and uh, enroll your subjects once you are ready. There is a timeline. Okay. So the add drop period or the timeline to enroll is two weeks from the intake date. Okay. Just so check with your academic department on the exact date. Now, some departments, as you know, that Today is the orientation for Help University and Help Academy. So some programs already started yesterday. Okay, so the time, so the exact date for the uh, for you to enroll may vary by a few days. Okay, so please check with your academic department. Once you enrolled your subjects, you will be issued an invoice because your fees are generally based on the number of credits, the number of subjects you have enrolled, enrolled and the total number of credits. So once you enroll, the system will calculate how much you need to pay. Then an invoice will be issued. Okay, And you have two weeks to pay from the intake date. Okay, So if today is the first day of your intake, you have two weeks starting from today. So please do not miss the deadline for payment. 
because there is a penalty, okay? This penalty is 150 ringgit per subject, okay? I've got to say it very quietly, okay? Right, so this is the payment method, right? If you have any problem with your payment, you can email to bursarycashier at help.edu.my. The payment gateway, uh, there's another way that, of course, we would prefer if you can pay online, okay? All payment should be made online. Because of the pandemic, we started uh, this online payment, so it had been very helpful. You don't have to come physically to this building in order to make your physical payment. You don't have to queue and wait and all that. So you can just make your payment online, right? So you, this is the steps. I'm not going to go through it. You can read through it yourself. Uh, I'm sure most of you have done online shopping. You know how to make your payments online. Okay. Uh, this is how you do it. Uh, via Jom Pay, which is the preferred uh, payment method for help. Okay. So when you pay uh, using Jom Pay, please remember the biller code. For Help University, this is the biller code 8433. For Help Academy, it's 1768. All right. And your, what you need to do is to quote your references, quote your student ID. Remember, I told you all your student card, you'll be issued a student ID. Make sure you quote your student ID and your name. Okay. Otherwise, your payment will go into somebody else's account. Okay, international students, for those of you who are still in your home country, this is the way to make your payment. Okay, so this is the bank, the name of the bank, the account number, the SWIFT code for Help University, note these details. For Help Academy students, note these details. Okay, again, once more, in case you missed it, if you need to... Uh, make any query concerning your payment, this is the email. Okay, And when you email your payment, the moment you make your payment, you have to email to this email address and you uh, send a copy of your transaction slip after your payment. Okay, so if you want to make your payment cash or credit card or you issue a check, so please come to level five of this building, okay? Elm Business School, or if you are in Subang, this is the address, and you issue the check, okay? Depending on whether you are a HU, Help University student, or HA, Help Academy student. Okay, letters, number four. If you require any letter of verification or letter of confirmation, uh, for you want to, uh, what you call it, get a student card, okay, for for public transport, uh, LRT, MRT, KTM, Rapid KL, okay. If your parent require a letter of confirmation for income tax purposes or for international students to open an account and so on, this is the address, okay. So if you are a HU student, use this address. If you are a HA student, use this address, okay. Don't get them mixed up because uh, then there will be a delay in getting your letter done. Moving on. Okay, online services. Uh, do my pride, okay, again, URL. When you do your online enrollment of subjects, this is where you get it done. Go into new my pride. You can enroll your subjects, you can view your results, you can view and change your personal particulars, you can view your course status, and you can also apply for your transcript. Okay, so all these are services that will be um, will be supported by registry, but you need to do an online application via New My Prime. Okay, right. All students, I will you will be given an email address by help. Okay, and you should use this email address given to you for all your. Uh, official correspondences with the university or with the college. And your email address is, no surprise, it is your student ID. So if your student ID is B, uh, whatever number, so this is your email address at helplife.edu.my. Okay? 
So make sure you use this address and check your email uh, regularly because all announcements, all correspondences, all notices will be issued via this uh, email. Okay, not your personal email. Okay, please note that. Okay, so it's used by help to send official emails, example information on convocation, uh, if you need your results or notification, uh, changes in your exams, timetable, etc., etc. Right, number three, on campus database access, library resources, a password will be emailed to you. So this is the uh, URL. Uh, okay, so these are information concerning other online services which are accessible to all students of health. Okay, their e-learning, the LMS and all that. So uh, note this email, which is very important. If you have difficulties accessing your LMS, you must email to LMS at uh, dot support. Okay, I, I, I can only use the pointer in one direction, so... I'm sure the rest of you can see, right? Okay. Okay, rules and regulations. Very quickly, huh? students must follow all the rules and regulations of help. Okay, very important. You must attend at least 80% of all classes. Now, attendance is compulsory, especially for international students. But so for those of you, because this is a criteria that is used to renew your student visa. So please. Note your results and your attendance. Okay, There's, those are the two criteria for all international students. Okay, so uh, you must uh, obtain an MC if you are sick. So if you are sick, then it will not be counted within within the eighty percent. Okay, so very important. So do not attempt to cheat during exams and do not plagiarize. I have got very limited time left. Okay, students are not to be involved in violent or abusive behavior and do not take drugs or possession of drugs. Uh, you must dress neatly and decently at all times. Okay, no smoking. Okay, on campus, please. Right, study award. Okay, final slide. There are, you have two weeks from the date of the intake to apply for any study award. Now, if you're not sure, you can come and check with the registry we will be able to assist you on whether you are eligible for any study award. Okay, so study awards are given on a first-come, first-served basis. Outcome will be decided after the study award committee meets in May. Okay, so whether you are applying for any study award or bursary, you must pay your course fees first, right? And then if there is excess fees, we will refund you. Okay. So all the application forms are available in New My Pride and in Help website. Okay, so please check whether you are applying for HU or HA Study Award because the forms are slightly different. Okay, again once more, these are our email addresses. Finally, okay, so these are all very useful email addresses you need to take note of. Okay, yes, you can take a picture so that you will be able to contact the right parts okay, for support. So make sure you write to registry at help.edu.my for HU registry. Then if it's for HA, there is a ha.registry at help.edu.my. Bursary, if you need any confirmation on payment or queries on payment, write to bursary cashier at help.edu.my. And on all matters relating to international students, write to issd at help.edu.my. For all password-related matters, write to helpdesk at helplife.edu.my and lms.support at help.edu.my on all matters concerning your e-learning or access into your learning materials. Okay, so thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Chong. All right, okay. Two sessions passed. How are you feeling? How are you feeling, guys? Good? Excited? 
learning new things, seeing new guys. Yes, no. Okay, very I, okay. Let me give you. Uh, let me just buy some time, huh? You want you want to see how I make you all talk? Okay, I always tell this to my student. Respond before you're being asked, or else we're going to have a few people who's going to come and introduce themselves to me. Are you ready to introduce yourself to me? One by one, standing in front, holding the mic. Is it a yes or a no? Okay, now you see, louder sound, right? Yes or no? Uh, okay, so you see at the moment, next one, no one speaks, I'm going to call immediately you. Okay, all right, good. All right, let's have the next briefing. We have a briefing on the safety and security. So for that, I have Mr. Raga, Radhakrishnan, who, are fond, who is actually fondly known as Mr. RK. Uh, to who is the coordinator for security and safety from the Department of Security? Please welcome Mr. R.K. Good morning. I'm Mr. R.K. from Security Department. Okay, welcome to the security and safety orientation. Okay, this is our organizing chart. Uh, uh, our security department organizing chart, uh, headed by Professor Dato Zakaria Ahmad, uh, Zakaria Ahmad, Deputy Vice Chancellor. And uh, as is by security manager Arizan Tamuji and me. Okay, general do's and don'ts on the campus strictly no drugs, no alcohol consumption, no smoking and vaping, strictly no sex and other incident behavior, conducting any activity that is against the law is prohibited, no feedings and uh, caring stray dogs and cats, no hanging out at a restricted area. Okay, okay student ID, students should uh, wear the student ID all time while in the campuses. Students must show the ID upon entry to the campus. Uh, wear student ID or produce upon request. Those without ID will be treated as a visitor. Security operation is 24-7. Okay, we have CCTV to monitor 24 hours. CCTV camera are installed all over the campuses. Control rooms is a brain of all the blocks. CCTV main purpose is surveillance. Footage can be used for forensic evidence. CCTV review upon security manager's approval. CCTV controls rooms operate 24 7. Okay, personal self preservations. Okay, couldn't see much. Okay. okay, incident report. Okay, report any incident within the campus to security manager. Security officer in control room can assist. Report can be made any time at 24-7. Action on any reports will be carried out at the session will be conducted accordingly. Loss and fine item, items. Okay, report can be made to security officer at 24-7. Loss item to be traced by security department. If found, the owner will be notified. 
uh, found item will be kept by security department owner to be checked and verified before collecting all are recorded black in black and white car park i think later mr cannon will advise on the parking okay one thing i okay if let's say students are study here very if your time is very late you go late night you need any assistance from the security guard they will assist to the car park if you need any assistance okay we have a medical emergency okay ERT, ERT professionals and vehicles were by security providers emergency numbers are all over campuses respond to emergency cases within the campus only staff from department to follow ERT car ambulance to be called if necessary staff from department to follow ambulance okay, fire emergency do not panic evacuate ban alarm ringing incessantly follow instruction from the fire wardens drill are conducted to famili familiarize respond treat drill alarm as real evacuate in order fashionable assemble at the designated area and master other emergency earthquake flood is other emergencies COVID protocol. I think all the students, I think you all received this huh? on your emails, huh? what to do and all this. Though the advisory SOP, they are sent to you, your yeah, emails. Okay. Compulsory to wear three ply mask in enclosed area, such as classroom, elevator, uh, office, and library act. Show your my suggestion status to the security guard while on the entrance of the campuses. Wear of the mask in common area, open space, and outdoor activities in encourage, and encouraged. Okay, this is also called maintain social distance at one meter whenever possible. Restrain from going to other places not relevant to your class, exam, or activity. Okay, if you become ill with COVID-19 symptoms or, or exposed as close contact, inform your lecturer or any department staff immediately. Take COVID-19 self-test or go to the clinic immediately. Uh, report your status to the COVID response team. They are filling up the MS forms. Return to the campus only after you are given clean bill of health. Okay. okay, these are the emergency numbers all over the campuses. You can see every floor we have emergency numbers. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. RK. All right, okay. Uh, we noticed all these are important. Uh, the security and safety is very important. At any point of time, you can notice that most of the places we have uh, contact details that if you need any assistance in terms of safety or security. All right. Now, three sessions have passed. But I believe you don't know who am I, right? You know one guy standing here talking to you from morning without introducing himself. Okay. My name is Madhavan and I'm the Senior Lecturer in Accounting for Faculty of Business, Economics and Accounting. So those of you from FBEA, Faculty of Business, then probably you'll be seeing me for accounting subjects. Right. Okay. Now, without further delay, let me call upon uh, Mr. David Tai. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You see, enthusiastic our era people. Aren't you excited, too, guys? Can you can I hear some sound from all of you? That's the way. All the good. Okay. Good. So uh, let me call upon Mr. David Tai, manager of Student Mobility Program, to give you an introduction to the Student Mobility Program. To you, Doc, Mr. David. Good morning, everyone. My name is David. Um, I am here today to introduce you to a program that offered um, by Hub University. Maybe you are familiar or not familiar with 
or heard or you know maybe you heard about it before uh even some of you use if you have participated um uh, during your high school um period you know a very short term one um this um student mobility program i i'm not sure whether um how well do you know about it but if i change to another name called student exchange program you might um heard about you, you might have heard about it uh, even participated but um by taking this opportunities i would like to define this program uh, as the student mobility is a program that initiates the exchange of students between two or more institutions for a short duration of studies um you you can see there are some uh, words i highlighted exchange of students exchange of students of course is involves um students from hub of course with our partner you see overseas okay um two or more meaning that you have the chance to take um to have more than one um times or more than one institution to take part during your studies in um with us okay and short duration of uh, of of studies how short um how you define short normally we will define it as one semester okay uh when you study overseas you know um when we uh, perhaps you in uh, take part in some summer course summer camp this we call short term of studies um okay i'll come back um if you put it in like in chinese that's called uh 学生, uh 交流计划, or 交换学生, uh, 学生交换计划, or in malay the program of uh, this is what we can offer of course we are uh to be honest um uh, this program is been offered um many many years we are not the, um, the only uh, so-called uh, university that provide this. That means that you have the chance to uh, take part in or with our partner university overseas um, uh, for the duration um, of study here with help. Um, what is student mobilities? Are you going to have your partner university certificate or you do the uh, credit transfer? There are a big cross over there. I want to differentiate this with the so-called training program normally we say or credit transfer it is nothing on that you won't get a certificate from our partners the overseas and you won't get transfer or credit meaning that uh, after a, a maybe a short-term period of studies like one semester you have to come back okay you won't get your certificate of perhaps like um our partners in australia or uk you won't get the certificate and the credit transfer um it is nothing on trust transfer but you can bring back the credits or the subject they have completed then do the credit examination here meanings um if there is a subject been uh, uh i would say um uh recognized and match when you completed in your uh, in our partners the overseas you can bring back and get the exemptions so you don't need to um i would say take the same subject again at help okay why is so that is because we are we offer such a chance for you guys to experience the um study overseas study abroad with our partner university um a lot of um, students ask me why should i join this program there are some reasons that i summarize here Academic wise, culture wise, career wise, exposure, personality, personality, and friendship. Academic wise, as what I, I, I just say, you can get credit exemptions if you completed you know, this, that particular subject at our uh, partner university. Means that uh, you can have the chance to experience how they conduct the course at our, university, uh, our partner university. And you have the experience if in future you want to pursue for a higher, um, I would say, uh, level of uh, academic, you have the chance 
to experience before you join in future. Culture. Of course, um, while you are traveling to um, uh, our, our partner university overseas, you have the chance to uh, gain experience to expose to a culture from different regions. Korea, of course, in future, if you the chance um, to have um, perhaps opportunities, uh, uh, career opportunities overseas, and you, you can take these opportunities uh, to experience first. Friendship, of course, for young people like you, I guess, um, this is a very, very important, interesting part that uh, for you guys to make friends. Um, share some experience with you guys. Uh, 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 annually, uh, every year, we have um, a lot of Korean students to come here for a summer course, English course. That's where for our students to have the chance to know or to make friends with our Korean, you know, uh, friends. And of course, because of due to the so-called K-pop kind of culture, so um, all these kind of activities is very, very uh, interesting and uh, been uh, well received by our students. At the same time, they have fun. They have a wonder, very, very wonderful time um, uh, during their stay in Malaysia. Of course, um, exposure. Uh, um, uh, by you know participating uh, with uh, such a mobility program, um, you can also enrich your own resumes. You know, um, to I would say um, to deal with different people or different different friends from different regions. Um, our uh, mobility program, um, in fact, um, I would say if we can um, categorize it into three categories which is a study, a st student exchange program, um, study abroad program, and a short-term course like summer camp or winter camp. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, this in details, but you can always log on to our website or uh, perhaps after this sessions or in future, you can just come and see me. I will explain it in details because um, technically there are some, um, I would say um, uh, there are many, many details to uh, to be to be brief, you know, before um, or if uh, you plan for your uh, so-called uh, studies overseas with uh, under this mobility program, okay, uh, come to me. I will uh, explain to you. I'll uh, brief you in details, okay. These are the some of the partner universities that we have, uh, um, which is provide uh, who, uh, provide provides um, the so-called program, uh, the exchange program. Uh, where you can choose from, you know. Uh, of course, uh, if you um, uh, plan to have the credit exemptions, there are much more uh, work to do. For example, subject matching, you know. Um, normally, uh, I would advise students, uh, if uh, you want to uh, get credit exemptions, uh, approach me six months before uh, your itinerary, uh, your so-called journey to the uh, our uh, partner university okay so uh, I'm sharing I, I'm not going to go through so much of wording you know so words you know telling all the stories but I will share some of the pictures that uh, our students um, uh, in the previous year uh, took part in um, the program that we organize or our partners we organize this is our um, partners from Korea that provides a South Korea winter program where our students um, travel and they have the chance to at least, you know, experience snow, you know, uh, ice skating, or uh, even the food itself, you know, uh, very authentic one, of course, you know, in Korea, okay? Um, these are all the, uh, not only academic, uh, academically, they also take part, in, uh, take part in the so-called cultural, like drum, you know, like some um, drawing, some karate, whatever, you know, the activities is very, very interesting. And of course, uh, by going there, we also receive uh, students from our partner university. These are the students from China. They are, uh, they are, they were here to, uh, for a summer course, summer English course, uh, just for one month. Of course, uh, uh, this is also a chance for our students to know more friends from China. 
And um, these are uh, students from uh, Tokyo, not in big amount or big, big numbers, but we have the chance to bring them around in Malaysia. And that the one is when they're here during the Chinese New Year. So we brought them to Malacca. There are some decorates, you know, in a, in a mall, I guess. I, I remember, if I remember. So uh, very interesting. Also, we show them how to, you know, the Chinese um, um, calligraphy kind of things. They might have um, seen that before, but uh, this is the chance for them to try or to experience by their own, okay? Um, okay, um, I want to introduce you to this program where, um, as what I told you, every year we receive a lot of students, at least 400 Korean students. These are, with, these are the flyers that we welcome them. There are a few there. You may, if you are interested, um, uh, these are the uh, flyers that we are recruiting buddy, Korean buddy, where when they come here, we have um, representative from help for you, you guys, if you want to interest you know, to be a friend, you know, to, to guide them, to, um, I would say, help them during their stay here. Or you can, you can, you can uh, scan the QR code. There is a so-called form. Um, uh, if you want to join. And in fact, I'm promoting it now. Normally, they are here in January and July. So the upcoming um, so-called Korean program will be in July. Not many after lockdown, but, um, um, but we um, hope you, can, you guys uh, can join, can join, okay? Uh, these are some, some of the program that we, um, we organize uh, for the summer course, English summer course. Uh, the total number one for one batch is around 150 Korean students. Uh, these are the places where we brought them, you know, to Malacca to try on the chicken rice bowl, um, the, the, kacang uh, the kacang satay. These are the friends from UK, our partners of UK, Unison of Portsmouth, you know, we brought them you know, for the city tour, like Royal Selangor, the Batu Cave, you know. It's an eye-opening for them, you know, why? Uh, most most of them, the first time travel to Asia. Uh, surprisingly, they like uh, they like um, Indian food, roti janai. Okay, so uh, we brought them to Putrajaya as as, as usual. Um, uh, this are one a very unique program that we uh, we collaborate with ANU. We not only um, um, fly them in uh, for a program called Constructing Asia, but we also brought them during the, start, the stay in Malaysia or joining this program, we brought them to uh, Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi. It depends, you know. So um, these are the program that we uh, I try uh, in a very short period to introduce you, at least um, let, you know, uh, let, let, let you know what it's all about, what is student mobility, okay? So, uh, a very proud uh, of sessions that I want to share with you. We are we rank number one of uh, out of the two hundred six hundred fifty in Asia on the outbound student exchange program for the year two o two one. Okay, so uh, of course uh, uh, this also uh, the contribution of our students who are take part who who have taken part in this program. Okay, but uh, due to the um, last two years lockdown, uh, we don't have any uh, student in and out uh, because of travel ban. So uh, this this kind of recognition is in two o two one. Okay, so this is uh, also a, um, is 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 a very very um, um, I would say uh, proud moments that uh, all our efforts been uh, recognized. Okay. My office is a level five. These are my contact. In future, uh, if you have any questions or any inquiries of student mobilities, please contact me. I also, of course, uh, um, uh, will help you, especially on if you want to do that credit exemptions. Uh, um, uh, I will brief you in details. Okay. So uh, I guess there's no questions from you guys. So I thank you.
Thank you, Mr. David. Hi. All right. Uh, another new experience, right? You you don't only experience the Malaysian learning culture, but you also learn to blend with other cultures as well. All right. So before I call up the next session, I think the next session you're going to be very hyped up. Okay. Uh, may I request the last two rows at the back there? Can you all move to the other side? Because you know why? We need that space for, for people to walk out to the washroom. Can I? Just the last two rows, last two rows at the back. Can you all move to the center or to my right? Thank you. All right, awesome. Okay, next, we have our era people again. No, la. our young happening guys. Okay, we have our Help University uh, Student Representative Council. All right, they represent the entire university represents you okay so let me call upon uh suki and andrea to take on please welcome them There are three files, one is for the PDF, one is a document. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Suki and I'm the president of the Hell Academy Student Council. Um, and I'm Andrea, the vice president of um, Hell Academy Student Council. So we are here today to let you guys know more about what is Hell Academy Student Council, such as who are we, what do we do, what is our upcoming event, and more. So by way of introduction, we from the Hell Academy Student Council as a group of elected and volunteer students who will work together, which will represent students from different faculties in Hell Academy, such as the departments of A-Levels, UOL, and UOD. And we are the main bridge between the students and the management. As we serve as the link between the students and the management, we do provide a platform for the students to voice up their needs and concerns. Apart from that, we pledge to always be there for all of you from different faculties in Hell Academy. So also, as we are from the Hell Academy, um, we will coordinate with Help University Student Council as well for any internal or external events. We will try our best to, like, we do focus on improving student integration and also ensure a quality campus life for students and to always do our best to spread positivity, connectivity, and inspirations among the campus. Now, what else do we do? So we develop unity and school spirit for everyone here, and we serve as a key intermediary between Help Academy and students on campus on welfare matters and resolutions. So not only that, we work closely with every club and society established to enhance the student lifestyle and campus experience.
So these are all the members of our Hell Academy Student Council. I'm the president, and we have Andrea as our vice president. Um, Jin Ye Song as our secretary. Would you like to say hi? Yeah, and we have Sammy as our treasurer. We also have Yue Chi as our director of public relations and design. Last but not least, we have Sarah as our director of events and logistics. So four of us are here today, and we are from the Department of A-Levels in Hell Academy. Um, we are having our exams in this month and next month, and our treasurer and director of events are not here today because they have exams today. Um, that's why they couldn't join us. Yeah. So there are two different organizations, main organizations in HELP Academy. The HASC, which stands for the HELP Academy Student Council, and the SRB, which is the Student Representative Board. So for us, the HASC, we are basically a larger um, recognized organization that's registered by the Ministry of Higher Education, while the SRB are more towards um, the more towards uh, representatives for the certain departments of Help Academy. So HASC organizes larger scale and more diverse events than the SRB, and it is the main bridge between the management and the students. While SRB are more for like the certain faculties and departments of Help Academy. As you guys can see, we had a lot of amazing and meaningful puzzle events such as Beach Cleaning Day, Esports Tournament, Volunteering at Soup Kitchens, Project Inspiration. So these events help to promote school spirit and leadership among the students. And furthermore, these events also help to um, the students to share their ideas and interests and more among themselves. Like we also had a virtual public speaking talk in last year's October as public speaking is incredibly vital. So we had a talk about it to let the students know more about what is public speaking and how should they do well or improve in public speaking. And we invited a few speakers. Our students did benefit greatly from the talk. Lastly, we also had a Valentine's Day sale in this year's February. Um, it was actually a collaboration between us and the Hell Academy A-Level Student Representative Board. Um, there were a lot of items such as roses and some baked goods. Like the students, the members really baked some cakes, cookies and more just for the Valentine's Day sale. So yeah, it was truly fun. So here are some <clears throat> upcoming events that are planned out by us. We have a blood donation bank coming up on June this year. So you guys can stay tuned for more details. If you could scroll. There is the QR code here that links to our Instagram page. And um, through our Instagram page, we post a lot on the information and details on upcoming events and more about Help Academy and us in general. So you guys can scan the code if you guys want to check our Instagram page. If you do not want to scan the code, you can also type hellacademy.sc for checking out our Instagram page. We yep. also have a Facebook account and also a Gmail where you can send us any inquiries or questions slash feedback. There's also a link tree there. All right, so that's all from us from the Hell Academy Student Council. So as we have introduced ourselves that um, we are from the Hell Academy Student Council, there's also HELP University Student Council. Um, both of us are actually doing the same thing as both our student council. 
The only difference is that they are from the Hub University and we are from the Hub Academy. Um, in other words, they will be, we are mainly in charge of different faculties in Hub University, while we are mainly in charge of different faculties in Hub Academy. Um, and due to today as a combined orientation, um, there is also orientation in Subang campus. So they are in charge of Subang campus while we in charge of Damansara campus. That's why they are not here today. Um, however, we will be helping them to present their slides. So here's a run through of what you can expect from today's presentation. So we are just going to touch on a few things like what is exactly the SRC, the office bearers of 2021 slash 2022, and how they operate. So what is SRC? The Student Council will represent students in university decision making and also provide ways for students to participate in and enjoy their university life. They also encourage university spirit and leadership among the students. Apart from that, as they are also a student council, so they definitely do provide a platform as well for students to voice out their needs and concerns to the management or any relevant parties. So here's, here are the members of the HUSRC. So we have the president, Amelia, the vice president, Corinne, the executive secretary, Yun Tung, the secretary number two, Yuan, um, the chief fin financial officer, Jacob, the secretary, a uh, surgeon at arms, Aina, media relations officer, Jamilia, and the interna international student representative, Sandra. So these are all members of the HUSRC, but they're not present here today, as Suki said, because they are in the Subang campus, because this is a joint orientation. Oh, and just to mention that they ha actually have um, 13 members in total. Yeah, so these are the main eight members. So how do they operate? The Student Council is a representative of Hub University students to the university's administration and department with regard to all matters of Hub University. They also plan some special events or projects just like us, HISC, to promote the interaction between the students, faculties, and administrations. In addition, they also represent Hub University in official events. The most important thing is the Help University Student Council do support students. So here's a brief hierarchy of the um, Student Representative Council of Help University. So like us, we have the president, then the vice president, then the secretary and the financial officer. And the further, um, further roles are split and branched out to different repre uh, representative faculties of Help University, like the BSC Damansara, um, BSC Subang, PSU, and the IT and the comms, different departments. So as you guys can see, they had a lot of um, team building activities to foster their creativity and leadership. And these events also help them to form bonds with one another, as well as a good way for them to resolve conflicts. So not only that, they had the cross-border event where they went to China for a cultural exchange where they learned more information on new cultural events and stuff that they did in China in the cross-border uh, event. They also had some past events such as um, a donation drive, a mentorship program, and a fitness challenge for 30 days. And there was also an interesting one, which was the Help University and Hell Academy Student Council joint inauguration. So there are more events that they did, like the Flirt 8, um, fundraisers, like the Valentine, they also did another Valentine sale that's for the Help University side. They also did like soft cookies and cakes and etc. They also had a global lunch talk event with Shopee Malaysia. They collaborated with the Shopee and they also had a speed challenge um, and many more. So one should note that um, joining the student council will turn your university life into more amazing, uh, memorable and meaningful, such as um, you'll be able to change your student's life, then build friendships, improve the university's community, 
improve leadership skills, as well as develop um, business contacts. So if you want to join the Help University Student Council, what should you do to do? Um, what must be expected of you if you want to join? So you're expected to attend council meetings regularly, as there will be one, um, a few meetings every now and then, depending on the student council. And you also have to make an effort to keep the student body informed about upcoming projects or events, such as like the blood donation or the bake sales. Yeah. All right, so um, the HAP University Student Representative Council is actually having a recruitment now. For those who are interested in becoming a member of the Student Council, kindly scan the QR code to view in the application form. And after you have filled in the form, the secretary will contact you and arrange an interview session for you. Um, and lastly, you'll be able to um, get your interview results within three working days. So um, for those who are really, really interested in joining the student council, just scan the QR code and, latest by the, and fill in the form latest by the 25th of May. So take note that is 25th of May is the deadline. Okay. So if you guys need any time to scan the QR code. No? Okay. I think we'll wait for a while. Yeah. All right, so I guess everyone is done. So that is all for the help university side. So if there's any, if you have any questions um, or, or any inquiries, you can contact them at helpuni.src at gmail.com or you can um, phone their president, which is Amelia, with the number below. They also have a um, Instagram and a Facebook page, which is helpuni.src. You can follow them there. They also post regularly and updates on what they do. So yeah, that's all for the Help University site. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now we'll proceed to the next session, which is the game sessions for everyone, okay? Yeah, that will be led by our secretary and our director of design. Um, hi everyone, as mentioned just now, I'm Yue Qi, but you guys can call me Yuki and that's Sam. Okay, as they set up the Kahoot for a moment, we're going to be leading the icebreaking session for now. So what's going to happen is we're going to start with a Kahoot session. Um, what you have to do is go to the website kahoot.it. I'm sure everyone here has played Kahoot before, right? So yeah, go to the website kahoot.it and then we will show a code here, which you will then have to um, log in to your Kahoot website or we can show a QR code that you can scan. So just give us a few moments as we set this up. And also um, this Kahoot, there will be prizes for the top three winners of the Kahoot. There will be grab vouchers of the first place being 30 ringgit, the second place being 20 ringgit, and the third having third ring 10 ringgit. So um, all these vouchers are by the courtesy and sponsorship of our amazing DSA, the Department of Student um, Affairs. So thank you to them for that. So yeah, let's just give us a few moments as we set it up.
Are you guys, can, can you guys join? You can guys, you can join using the QR code, or you can go to the website and key in the code. All right, are we all done? Um, I think there's 142 people or around that number here. So could everyone just join really quickly? <laughs> Um, has anyone not joined yet? By any chance? No? Is everyone in? All right, then I think we can start the game. Well, we're going to start now, right? All right, the first question. This is to see if you've been paying attention so far. <laughs> What is the full name of help? Come on, guys, you're joining the school. If you get this question wrong, uh huh. But it's tricky, I can admit that. Oh, nice. Oh, 68. Nice, nice. Oh, KY, all right, all right. Okay, KY leading place. the game so far? Okay. Well, that's a lot of quick answers. That is fast. <laughs> if I joined the school, <laughs> yeah, I would know. But good job, guys. Five more seconds left. Mm, all right, you guys paid attention. Oh, all right. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, the third question is who are the founders of Help University? Hey, you guys should know this. Whoever <laughs> picks that totally Chong Wei, you know, I mean, it, it could be a possibility. Time's up. Aha. Uh -huh. oh. oh, there's Good actually someone within Lee Chung Wei. Wow. Lee Chung Wei. Who nice. are the three people <laughs> who picked that Lee Chung Wei? Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> actually. 
you should receive a separate prize just for that. Yo, Jay and Benny is on fire. Wow, all right, all right. Jay has been yeah, up there. <laughs> what is the logo of help? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's, who's this? Okay, I guess this is a luck game. Yo, this is Whichever luck. You like, all the best. Just do it, just do it, just do it. Oh, oh all right. Three people are very lucky today, <laughs> I see. <laughs> oh, Jay. I, I'm so Aww. sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know this would happen. All right, what's, what is the full name of HASC? This is our identity, oh, guys. Please know guys, this. Let's go, let's go. Senior citizens. If we look very old, then yeah, sure, go for uh, that. Uh, oh, Two oh, people pick senior citizens. Man, guys! Man, who is this? Do I look 60 to you? I'm sorry. All right. What is the role of HASC? Guys, this is, this is, this is easy. The two people who picked senior, yes. senior citizens go again. Sure, I dare you. Yes. Oh, oh, all right. Okay, okay. Who are these? Who are these two two dudes? That that red one and green one. All right. Okay, I'm seeing. We you. can deliver gifts during <laughs> Christmas. We will, you know, spread joy. Ooh. Who is the president of HASC? The blue one is definitely a correct answer. Who did the blue one? <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Kahoot, wow. Fire, fire. I don't know who is this, the who is this one guy that's just keep, uh, you know? The four <laughs> people who chose study 24 hours per day. I want you, I want to no, see you I, study I, I 24 hours. I want to see hours. you, yeah. I want to see right. you. Oh, Benny, Benny. All right, wow. you're on fire. Okay, okay. Jay is making his lead back to number two. What is the upcoming event at Help Academy? Mm, yeah, Justin Bieber. He's coming, he's coming. Cosplay Fiesta sounds more exciting. Yo, online workouts. Ah, yo. For those who chose Justin Bieber, right? I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, the scoreboard isn't changing. When is our blood donation? Ah, we mentioned ah, just, who, just now. Who didn't listen? Who didn't listen? Ah, no one's answering now. No one's answering. Oh, wow. Not one person? Wow, no. Oh, all right. Guys. All right. None of y'all listen. Okay. It's in June. Oh, Be sure guys, to join, guys. guys. Please support us. What is the tallest okay, building? Okay, now we're world? entering the okay, trivia. Guys. Oh, yeah, guys. This is easy. This is easy. I think it's KL Towers. I don't know. Is there something wrong? Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, okay. Dude, I, I don't know who's that four people. <laughs> uh, it's okay, I, Malaysian I, I, I don't, pride. I don't know what to say. Pat patriotism. Mm -hmm. Benny, J, and Kahoot, but another Kahoot. Oh. The seven people who pick 100 plus, very, you know, I'm Malaysian pride. Yeah, I'm, proud, yeah, I'm proud of you as well. Oh, Benny, you did that, huh? Oh, you're dropping. All right. <laughs> <You're so mean. laughs> 
Okay, TR is making the lead right now. How many squares do you see? Mm, easy, easy. Let's go. Think out of the box. Oh, oh, nice try. All right. <laughs> Good job. Quick thinking. Oh, oh. TR is still in the lead. Guys, I'm a part of your body. You can hold me with your left hand, but not with your right hand. What oh, am, am I? I? Very good, very good. Oh. Jay is back oh, on the leaderboard. Yay. Yay! All right. I'm Tom's father. Oh, okay. Never mind. You guys can read it. <laughs> this is basic English, guys. Basic English. Guys. Hmm, what happened? What, what, why, why, how, Sam, how does the grandfather come out? Not everyone is an English literature student, okay? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Benny. Benny! Hey! All right. What is the highest number of Michelin stars a restaurant can be awarded? Guys, you guys watch Gordon Ramsay, right? Hell Kitchen, yeah? Guys, guys. Oh, what what's up with the two stars? Five stars. <laughs> what's up with the two stars? Oh, let's go, Jay, Jay, let's go. Jay, okay, <laughs> we're rooting for you, Jay. You better stay in the top three. <laughs> this is a simple question. Question, yes. In every single critical oh, thinking yeah, right, testing, right, right. yeah, take. Oh, look at everyone being fast. Everyone has done this question so I'm before. I'm sure someone chose not the birth. I, I, I can just predict that. That that two person. The same one who's the yeah, same ones who chose like that Li Chong Wei, yeah, I think. All right, see, see, there's four. It's okay. Good job, guys. <laughs> Majority is very smart. <laughs> Kahoot. Alright. The infamous meme. We all know this, guys. We're all Gen Zs. Well done. All right. Both are incorrect. Does that mean she has half the teeth? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. How big is Malaysia? Uh, guys, guys, testing on your sejar. Oh, wait, that's not sejar. You know, that's geography. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> if numbers mean nothing to you, just take a guess. It's okay, it's luck. <laughs> nice. Not nice. bad. An even distribution. Oh, dude, Jay is smart. All right. Oh, HFO. Nice. HF. Joshua. What does come down but never goes up? All right, all right. 
Jay, come on, secure your place as number one, please. Guys, it's 10 ringgit difference for first and second place, you know? Those with the drive. All right, we're going to do this fast, yeah? We're not going to we look have at the like, leaderboard yeah. anymore. We have two or three seconds for each question. All right, guys. Uh, hey, Come on. Hey, hey, we're just doing it. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. Okay, let's end it no, in five, five, five seconds. seconds. Give them pressure. Five, yes, five, four, four three, three, two, two, one. one. All right, all right, no, no more, no more. <gasps> 15 people got all it right. right. Wow. Right. You have my respect. Oh, all right. You are right, Joshua. All right. What is the rarest m, &M color? Mm. Okay, five seconds for this. Five, mm. four, three, two, one. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Brown. That's okay. Good, good, good. You eat a lot of m, &M. All right. Who is the richest man in the world? Hey, let, let's go for the yellow one, am I right? Yeah, K-pop, am I right? Guys, okay. guys, come up, come up. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry. All right, HF. Wait, Jay's at number five. <laughs> guys, guys. It's probably Australia. Okay, five, four, three, Two, one. Guys, we have no enough time. Sorry, yeah. Yes, we have to speed through everything. <laughs> All right. Who is the tallest NBA player? Hey. Okay, we're gonna end in in ten seconds. I mean, in two seconds. Two seconds. One second. Oh, bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, majority no, chose Yao Ming. Is. Okay, I see. Oh, Jay, Jay is coming back. Another mean question. Oh. Five, four, three, two, two one. one. Bam. All right, good job. Um, easy question, you know. Oh, Joshua. All right, Joshua. This is basic knowledge, okay, please. Maybe not our generation knowledge, yeah, maybe but you not know, our generation. <laughs> <laughs> for the respect of the gone generation. Okay, three, two, one. Oh. Oh, good. Oh. Someone chose Tongkat Ali. Okay. Hey, respect, respect, respect. All right, next. <laughs> oh, guys. Tricky question, but you. Okay, seven might seconds. Know this. Six. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Bam. Oh. Good. Equation. Oh. Oh. Jay, 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 you got to get the money. <laughs> okay, last question. All right. It was in the 50s. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, Good job. Okay, okay, Good okay, job, okay, okay. We're going to see the winners now. All right. So who got the money? Oh, all oh, right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. Uh, good job, HF. HF. I guess JJ didn't come up. Oh, congratulations okay, to the Okay, congratulations. The winners, so please vouchers. come to the side of the hall to grab your vouchers. Yeah, could you meet Suki and Andrea over there to collect your All right. information for the vouchers? All right. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Awesome, right? Give them a big round of applause. You want to say something? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Help Student Representative Council. You see, this is what life is at Help is. You see, a lot of you, okay, a few, a few analysis lah. A lot of you know some answer. A lot of you don't know some answer. 
and some of you gave answers that are out of the box. No, if it's true, you know, if someone tells me Popeye needs Tongkat Ali for a strength, who knows? Who knows? He may need one soon. Think out of the box. Yeah? Yeah, winners, winner, per menang. Let's look at the per menang. You not do it. Ta. You want money? Okay, we have one, two. All right, awesome. All right, good. All right, so remember, if you got it wrong, it's okay. Remember, this is time and this is the place that you can get the best of you coming out soon. So trust me, if you could not answer this, with the exposure that you have over the period of three years, trust me, you can be master of everything. All right? So without further delay, uh, okay, let me have the next session. We have a sharing on uh, from the head and counselor or center of psychological and counseling services. We're going to have a video. We're going to have a video sharing on this, yeah? Because uh, Miss Sarah is not able to make it today. So just sit back, listen to the video. It's very important. It's very, very important. You know why? Because um, a lot of people did not realize that they can be affected by what is affecting around them. So if you or you know anyone who are affected because of anything, then you know who to refer them to. Because the, the, the topic that she's going to share is need someone to talk to. All right? Very important. Let me share with you this. Huh? Okay, meanwhile, the video is getting ready. Okay? You should always be very observant what's happening around you and what's happening to people around you. All right? Your ability to identify may save people. All right? So listen to what uh, Miss Sarah have to share which will be very useful for you throughout your journey uh, in these three years. All right? So how is it going so far, guys? I think SRC charged you up to maximum, right? 150%? If you don't say yes, then it's pity of them. They spent 40 minutes for them, for you all. Is it a yes? A louder yes? An exciting yes? A powerful yes? Give them another big round of applause. All right. So, are you all hungry? Only a few people hungry. Sure, sure. Miss Vivian cut lunch. Okay, how many of you are hungry? Put up your hand. I think the food is packed. So, I thought I saw. Okay. I, I just share something. Huh? Sometimes I ask students, you know, I'll always tell this in my class. When lecturers ask questions, do not do certain exercises. What exercise is this? Number one. No, that's not mine. Don't do your neck exercise and shoulder exercise. You know what's the next uh, neck exercise and shoulder exercise? The first shoulder exercise. If lecturer asks you something, can you answer? Okay. These two exercises are prohibited strictly from the class. All right. Can I? Can I? So how many of you want lunch? Say yes and put up your hand. You don't put up, you don't get lunch. Huh? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's hear uh, what Miss Sarah has to share. Hi, my name is Ronald Lee. I'm a counselor from Center for Psychological and Counseling Services, also known as CPCS. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the services that CPCS offers and briefly share with you what is counselling. CPCS is founded in October 2018 under the Faculty of Behavioural Sciences. The aim of the establishment of the centre is to promote psychological and emotional well-being by providing professional mental health care. We have two centres right now and they are located at the 10th floor of Wisma Help and the 6th floor Block B at Help University Subang 2 campus. Currently, we also offer online counselling through video call. So, what is counselling and psychotherapy? In both counselling and psychotherapy, it involves two people working together to solve a problem. The problem can range from difficulties at work, 
to difficulties in relationships, or other behavioral problems such as procrastination, addiction, or problem with time management. Other than that, counseling and psychotherapy also work with individuals in managing stress or issues with persistent low mood such as depression and anxiety. Ultimately, in counseling and psychotherapy, its main aim is to understand a person's feeling and behaviors and addressing issues with the goal of improving a person's life. And all these are done through the development of a healing, safe, and therapeutic relationship between a therapist and an individual. Therefore, in a counseling and psychotherapy session, it is non-judgmental, there's no right and wrong, and it is private and confidential. A lot of people think that only people with severe mental health problems go for counseling, but that is not true. Everyone can benefit from counseling, especially if you are seeking to understand yourself better. Some of the benefits of counseling are such as increase in self-awareness and self-exploration. It can be exploration of your interests, desires, values in life, sexuality, and thoughts you have about yourself, the world, and the people around you. Other than that, counseling can help you to explore various possible options in difficult circumstances that you are facing or foresee you will face. And by this, it promotes mental health. So this is our team. Our team consists of seven members in total. One of our counselors, Photo Sandy, is not uploaded to the slides yet. We have four counselors and they are Sarah, the manager of the center, myself, Ronald, Grace, who is based at the Subang Center, and Sandy, who is based at the Wisma Help Center. We have two clinical psychologists, and they are Magdam, who is based at the Subang Center, and Alistair, who is based at the Wisma Help Center. And you may ask, what are the differences between a clinical psychologist and a counselor? Actually, both of them do the same thing, which is providing counseling and psychotherapy. Except that, a counselor doesn't administer certain kinds of psychological assessment, such as the IQ test, and assessment on childhood or neuropsychological disorders. And a clinical psychologist doesn't administer career testing. Last but not least, we have Ruby, our center's coordinator. Currently, she is the only coordinator in the center. In CPCS, the services we offer are individual sessions, which is a session between just between the therapist and the client. We also offer family sessions, which usually involve either the whole family of the client or certain members of the family. Family session is usually initiated if it is identified that the problem stem from the family system. It can be recommended by the therapist or initiated by the client themselves. We also offer couple sessions, usually to work on relationship issues within a couple. Last but not least, we also offer group sessions. Group sessions work with a group of people with similar problems, such as procrastination, grief, depression, or anxiety. We also offer psychological assessments. These assessments are mainly administered by the clinical psychologists, as mentioned earlier. Types of assessment are such as personality assessment, IQ assessment, childhood disorder assessments, and neuropsychological assessments. These assessments are usually done upon recommendation by the therapist after some subjective evaluation was done instead of based on requests from the clients. The therapist will exercise their judgment to see whether an assessment is needed and useful for the therapy. Other than the psychological and counseling services that we offer, the center also organizes events to spread awareness about mental health. Now I'm going to move towards sharing some of the past events our center has done. One of the yearly events is the World Mental Health Day which is celebrated on the 10th of October every year. Various activities will be in place during the event, mainly on learning about mental health. And two years ago, we invited Miss Malaysia Jane Teo to share some of her experiences about being cyberbullied. She also shared how she dealt with the cyberbullying that time, 
You can look at our Facebook to watch the video if you want to. We went on Facebook live during the event and have uploaded into our Facebook page. This is an autism awareness event. It falls on April every year. So do check out our World Mental Health Day event as you can learn a lot about mental health information there. Now I'm going to explain on how to access to our services. For registration of services, you can do it at our website, cpcs-helpuni.com and click on the appointment tab. You will be asked to fill in a Google form to register for the service. After registration, within three to five working days, your assigned therapist will contact you to make the first appointment. If you want to speak to us or you have any inquiries, you can reach us at our email, cpcs at help at gmail.com or call us at our telephone number. If you just want to learn more about mental health information or you want to know our upcoming events, you can follow us on our Facebook page. We usually share mental health information and information on our upcoming events there. This is how our website looks like and the appointment tab is within that cloud at the top right corner. And this is how our Facebook page looks like. And now we also have our Instagram account. If you are a picture person and likes to see infographics, you can follow our IG account. We usually post our infographics on mental health information there. Our operating hours is from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. On Saturday, we are open for half day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we are closed on Sundays and public holiday. That's all for this orientation. I wish you all the best in your university years and most importantly, have fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was a sharing from Mr. Ronald. Huh? Uh, yeah, Ronald. Yeah, correct. Uh, the person who was supposed to assist us was uh, Miss Sarah. She was not able to make it. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next session. Uh, okay, wait. Let me see. All right. We have the... A briefing on introduction to learning resource center. So for that, let me call upon Mohammad, Mr. Mohammad Ferdaus, who is a senior library assistant from Help Learning Resource Center, to give you a small intro about the learning resource center itself. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Help University. So today, my name is Firdaus. Uh, I'm from uh, library. So I would like to share with you on uh, Help Learning Resource Center, or we call it as a, a library. OK, uh, there are two ways to access the library website. Uh, you can go to our library homepage, library.help.edu.my, or you can go to Help homepage and uh, look for a uh, learning resource center. So basically, uh, help have five libraries. Uh, we have HU and HA library is in Wisma Help on first floor, uh, which is uh, near to uh, MRT Samantan. Uh, Founders library is in Subang 2 campus. ELM business school library, uh, ELM and law library uh, is in, in this building on LL floor. So you can make use any of this library uh, to study. For the opening hours and location, uh, we operate nine. Uh, we operate uh, nine a.m. to five thirty p.m. Uh, Monday to Friday, uh, Saturday nine a.m. to one p.m. Sunday and public holiday uh, close. Also, you may see the campus library's location here, uh, together with the telephone number for you to contact. As part of the library printing, as part of library facilities. We also provide library printing facilities. There are two types of uh, printer. We have Rico printer and HP printer. For Rico printer, it costs you 15 cents for black and white and one ringgit for color. While for HP printer, 10 cents for black and white and one ringgit for color. Also, user may request library staff to print for them, uh, but we need to charge you more, 20 cents for black and white and one ringgit 50 cents for color. It is because we want to encourage students to be more independent in using the 
uh, self-service printing. Next is uh, library facilities. We also uh, provide you library. We also provide you uh, open space uh, for you to study, uh, PCs and discussion room for you to use. Also, please remember to follow all the uh, SOP in uh, the library. Library also are equipped with uh, computer facilities uh, such as PC and workstations, together uh, with the Wi-Fi access for you to use. Okay, for the book loans uh, policy, since you are under pre-university and undergraduate students, you are allowed to borrow four books for 14 days under the open shelf. For the rest part, you can use and borrow uh, within three hours in the library only. For the magazine, it is now circulating and bound magazines, one copy for 14 days. For the book fines, library will, in, will impose uh, fines for the overdue uh, books, 50 cent per book per day under the open shelf, and one ringgit per book per hour for a uh, red spot. So if you uh, lose or damage the book, you have two ways to replace it. Uh, first one is replacement copy, means that you need uh, to buy uh, the same edition at your own cost and bring it back to the library uh, together with the fines or library will uh, buy the book and you need to pay doubles the price of the book together with the uh, fines. Next is overdue notice. Uh, in our systems, there are four emails that will send to you. It is a reminder that uh, your books are going to be due soon. Okay, for the first email, three days before due, uh, the uh, fine uh, is not incurred. And then uh, one uh, second email, one day after due, the fine has been uh, incurred. Third email and fourth email after the due, the fine will keep running. Also, please uh, check your spam or junk box because uh, somehow uh, it doesn't go through your inbox. So make sure to check these two boxes. This, uh, this notices is a, a courtesy only. So library will not be uh, responsible for any undelivered notices. Okay, next I will show you how to look for a book. Okay, let's say before you want to come to the library, you want to check uh, what other books are in the library. You may check uh, through uh, OPEC, which is Online Public Access Catalog. Okay, the first screen shows you the book uh, search results. There are many books title uh, may appear. So you can uh, choose one of it to see the record. The second screen shows you the full record of the book. Before you, uh, you also need to jot down uh, like call number, title and author because it is easier for you uh, to retrieve the books uh, from the shelf. And also please pay attention on the location and status. Status means check in, the book is available. Check out means the book is not available in the library. And also, uh, this book can be anywhere, uh, HSU Library, uh, Subangtu Library, or even in ELM uh, Library. Okay. This is uh, physically, we uh, arrange the books according to Library of Congress classification. It is a, a worldwide classification. Uh, in every uh, book, there are a small uh, tag label on the spine of the book. For example, call number HF5635 WAT. HF is for uh, accounting, uh, business, and finance. 5635 is a specific accounting subject. And WAT is the first three digits of author surname. So we arrange the book according to alphabetical order A to Z. As you can see, the uh, red color here are the books that highly used in the library. Okay, next we move on to the online databases. Okay, uh, what is the difference between books and journal articles? Okay, normally uh, books uh, often need time to write the book. Usually it takes one to two years because uh, the book content is slightly outdated. Then it needs time to write the new one. Books also are required to obtain information on theories and facts of a topic or subject area. For the database journals, it was published the latest findings of a subject area and it is good for your research assignment and final year projects since you need the latest findings of a subject area. But you also need books and theories and facts. Okay, uh, in order to access the uh, database, in our uh, library website, uh, you go to, uh, you click under databases and click on digital library 
or you can straightly uh, go to uh, database login here and key in your student ID and password. Your student ID and password is assigned by CIC. Kindly note that uh, the password is valid for 90 days and after that, you may need CIC to uh, reset for you. But now, uh, CIC has come up with a new user guide called SSPR. Uh, so uh, you can uh, reset your password on your own. If there's any uh, issues regarding the password matter, please email to helpdesk at helplife.edu.my. The uh, password also can be used in assessing Help Life email, Microsoft Teams, library online database, computer and library PCs, and also Wi-Fi. Whereas for the MyPride and LMS are using the different login which is given by the faculty. So this is the uh, user guide uh, to reset the password. You just need to follow all these steps to reset the password. Okay. Uh, next, I will show you how to search for ebooks and database in our ProQuest database. So here, this is the list of databases that help subscribe. And also, we provide you the list of user guides on how to download the ebook. All the user guide, you may get it in the LMS. You just uh, log into your uh, account and uh, look for on, uh, successful online learning. So this is the ProQuest search bot, uh, which is same like Google search. Next is citation. Uh, when you do your assignment, you need to give a credit to the source where you take it from. Uh, if not, you may uh, accuse of plagiarize the information. So as you can see at the right, right hand side here, uh, you may click on site to see the citation. And also you may choose the citation style of your uh, reference. Next is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is uh, good for your academic purpose, but some people, they like to use uh, Google instead of Google Scholar. Uh, Google is not suitable and it is uh, the information is not valid, so please make use of Google Scholar. Somehow, uh, the Google Scholar doesn't have a full text. To get a full text, you must use our subscribe database or you can use both. Also, Google Scholar provide you a uh, citation uh, for your reference. You may click on the two little comma there and you will see the citation given. Okay, next, uh, how to identify fake news or information. Okay, on this uh, page, I will focus on the three main points only. First one is do a visual assessment. Does the news article and website seem highly quality? Second, identify the news outlet. Make sure the news outlet well known well-respected and trustworthy. Uh, number three, check the web domain. Check the web domain. Make sure the URL is uh, valid. And also, uh, the rest you can read on your own. Since you may get the slideshow, uh, which is we have uploaded into the LMS. For the rules and regulations, make sure to return all your books before the graduation and don't delay it because the fine will keep running. Please follow MOH SOPs in the library. Do not bring any beverages and food into the library. Only drinking water is allowed. So for further information regarding the password related matters, please email to helpdesk at helplife.edu.my. For library or database related matters, please go to our uh, library homepage. Go to contact us or you can email to library at help.edu.my. So once again, welcome to Help University and thank you for your attention. So you, any questions? All right, thank you, Mr. Momad Ferdows. Okay, I believe that uh, you have uh, got some information where you can browse for knowledge and I think that will be your next place that you should be visiting the most uh, once your semester starts, yeah. All right, next we have a briefing on uh, Mata Pelajaran Umum uh, subjects, MPU subjects. So for that, let me call upon Ms. Teresa Belinda, who is the Deputy Manager for MPU Unit. Uh, 
pengalaman saya. Hi, good morning, everyone. No energy, is it? <laughs> okay, today I'll be briefing you about the MPU subjects at Health University. All right. Uh, may I know how many uh, certificate students are here? Any certificate students from HA? None? All right. Uh, any students from Health Academy? None. Okay. So I'll start, start my briefing uh, with uh, diploma level, then I'll continue with degree level, all right? All right, uh, as for diploma level, okay? Under MPU 1, we have Pengayatan Etika dan Peradaban and also Philosophy and Contemporary Issues. And also Bahasa Melayu Komunikasi 1. All right. So for local students, you have to select Pengayatan or Falsafa. Got it? So if you're an international student, you'll be doing Bahasa Melayu Komunikasi 1. Okay. So uh, Falsafa and Isu Semasa will be in English. As for Pengayatan, Etika dan Peradaban will be in BM. Okay. So under MPU 2 and MPU 3, we have two subjects here. The one on top, which is read Bahasa Kebangsaan A, need to be taken by those who don't have a credit in SPM Bahasa. Okay, so if you are from UEC or O levels and you have taken Bahasa, please bear in mind that it is not equivalent to SPM Bahasa. All right, therefore, you are required to take Bahasa Kebangsaan A. Do you understand? Clear? Okay. So if you have a credit, then you'll be doing introduction to Malaysian tourism together with international students. Okay. And MPU 4, we have two subjects here, which is sports and community service. So you select either one of it. As for this subject, is it the pass or fail grading? Okay, so it's 100% assessment. There's no final exam for this. Okay. And finally, general elective. And the subject that we are offering is communication one for both local and international students. Semester, our next semester is a short semester, May intake. All right, and the subjects, that we are offering is Pengayatan Etika dan Peradaban, Philosophy and Contemporary Issues, Bahasa Kebangsaan A. All right, these three subjects that I've mentioned, the classes will be face-to-face. -face. All right, so you can get the timetable from your academic department. All right, uh, as for Introduction to Malaysian Tourism and Communication 1, all right, we have two quotes here. It will be virtual class, an online class. Okay, so please make sure to get the virtual class link from your academic department. The registration and airdrop period starts from May 19, which is tomorrow, up to May 27. And the last day of uh, subject fee payment will be on May 27. The final examination date is to be confirmed. So once the final examination date is finalized, your lecturer will inform you, all right? So please take note of the final examination date. Clear? Good. So the release of result will be on August 13, and you'll be able to view your results through MyPride. So make sure to have your MyPride account, all right? So you can register for these MPU subjects through my pride starting from tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's a first come, first serve basis. All right. Now for degree level under MPU 1, 
we have three subjects here, all right? Pengayatan etika dan peradaban, falsafah dan isu semasa need to be taken by local students. For international students, you'll be doing falsafah dan isu semasa and bahasa Melayu komunikasi too. As I mentioned earlier, falsafah dan isu semasa will be in English, okay? Pengayatan etika dan peradaban will be in bahasa. So if I hope that your command in bahasa is good, okay? If you are struggling, please inform the lecturer. Okay, do not just sit there and keep quiet. The lecturer wouldn't know. All right, approach your lecturer. Tell them if you are facing any difficulties, if you can't understand, you can't follow, tell them. All right. And under MPU 2 and MPU 3, we have two subjects here. Bahasa Kebangsaan A is similar with uh, diploma level. All right, so... Um, if any one of you have done Bahasa Kebangsaan elsewhere and you are transferring to help, all right, please take note. This uh, subject is done at any one level. So if you have passed this subject, you'll be exempted. Okay. So what you have to do is that you have to submit your course syllabus and academic transcript to your department to be exempted. All right. So if you're from UEC, or O levels, you have done Bahasa, please take note, it is not equivalent to SPM Bahasa. Therefore, you are required to take Bahasa Kebangsaan A. And uh, if you have a credit, you'll be doing A star gen careers in Malaysia and beyond. MPU 4, we have uh, two subjects here. We have sports and event management. All right, for both local and international students. Again, it's either pass or fail grade. 100% assignment. As for event management, all right, uh, you guys will be taught on uh, fine dining etiquette. All right, you'll be going to Shangri La at Lafit. Okay, a proper fine dining. It will be an exciting, uh, you know, because uh, we had this uh, for January intake students the first time that we have offered surprisingly it turned out well we had few groups actually from damansara campus and subang campus okay and uh, finally under general elective we have two subject here subjects here uh, we are currently we are only offering communication and leadership skills all right crucis integrity dan anti rasua is not being offered at the moment so semesters is uh, main take short sem. So these are the subject that is being offered, which is pengayatan etika dan peradaban, philosophy and contemporary issues, bahasa kebangsaan A. All right, all these three classes are face to face. A star gen careers in Malaysia and beyond is specially offered to Department of Business Studies. So student from Business Studies. You can enroll for this subject. The registration and ad drop period is from May 19 to May 27. The last day of subject fee payment will be on May 27. The final examination date is to be confirmed. So once it's finalized, when your lecturer inform you, please take note. And the release of result will be on August 13 and you'll be able to view your uh, results through my pride. And uh, please take note of this, all right? All Malaysian and international students are required to take and pass the MPU subjects. The medium of instruction uh, for diploma and degree MPU 1 subjects is in Bahasa Melayu except for Falsafa dan Isu Semasa. All right, it will be in English. And uh, you might be wondering whether you can be exempted from taking these MPU subjects or not. I've already highlighted this for you. All right, you can refer to Act. 555 five, Private Higher Educational Institution at page 34, compulsory subject, section 43, bracket 3. So what it says is that no exemption for compulsory subjects given to a course of study by the private higher educational institution jointly or in affiliation, association or collaboration with such university 
university college, higher educational institution, or professional body. All right. You are required to take the MPU subjects for the duration that you are here. Okay. Well, who might exempt you from taking these MPU subjects then? So you can refer to Act A1535, Private Higher Educational Institution, Bracket Amended, Act 2017, Page 13, Amended of Section 43, is only the Registrar General may exempt you from taking the MPU subjects. Clear? So please don't go and tell your parents that at health, we are forcing you to take MPU subjects. We are just complying to the act. Clear? Understand? Good. All right. As for the assessment breakdown for MPU subjects, it's 70% of continuous assessment and 30% final exam. Like the MPU for an A-star gen careers, uh, there's no final exam for it. So it's 100% ass uh, assessment. Okay. All you need to do is that just follow the instruction that is be given by your lecturer. You can pass this subject. It's an easy, uh, you know, scoring subject. It, all you have to do, follow the lecturer's instruction. That's it. So this will be the grading scheme. Okay. Anything below 50 is considered as a failed grade. As I said earlier, the continuous assessment are 70%. So let's say even if you uh, achieve 50% for your continuous assessment, the catch is that you still have to attend your final exam. Even though you did not write anything, you have to attend. You have to be there. Understand? All right. Please take note of this. Yeah. If you're absent for the final exam due to medical reasons, uh, you are required to submit your MC within three working days. So once you have submitted your MC, what happens is that the exam board committee will decide whether to give you a SX grade. SX stands for supplementary examination grade. If you have been awarded with that grade, you have to pay uh, a supplementary examination fee, which is about 300 ringgit before you could sit for the final exam. And you'll be sitting for the final exam immediately the next semester. It doesn't matter whether the subject is being offered or not. Okay, you will sit for the final exam. And let's say if you fail to sit for the final exam, what happens? You'll be awarded with a F grade, which means you fail the subject and you have to repeat the subject all over again. Okay, so I hope you know how much is the subject here of MPU. For degree level, it's 1,800 ringgit. Okay. So this will be my email address. If you have any inquiries uh, regarding MPU, you may drop me email. Okay. Any questions before I end my session? Do you have any questions? You guys are clear? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Teresa. OK. <laughs> you should have asked her a question. Because uh, I have students, I mean, at the end of every lecture, uh, we will definitely ask students uh, any questions. Very rarely students will ask no. But I had a very good student who had the guts to ask me. Guess what's the question? <laughs> Ever 21. You know what's the question? Are you done? Can we go? No, that's like, I mean, it's a question, isn't it? Isn't it? Because the, the person over here asked any question. So you're, you can ask anything, right? Yes or no? Oh, but please don't ask that in the class, huh? <laughs> don't say Madhavan gave me an idea. All right? Okay, are you all hungry? Very hungry. Okay, good. Lunch will come to your seat at 12 p.m. All right? 
So I we have a, a very short video sharing. We have a very short video sharing. And after that, lunch will be provided direct to your table. And uh, now you can enjoy the lunch. And um, after that, uh, after the session, I will be ending. Okay, you watch the video first.
Hi, my name is Dr. Nicholas Lam. I'm the Dean of the ELM Graduate School at HELP University. I'm in charge of the ELM Graduate School that have two doctorate programs and nine master's degrees. The directions of ELM Graduate Schools is to focus on the experiential learning that emphasize on innovations and creativity. We want to make learning a fun and memorable experience. The focus of ELM Graduate School for the next few months will be a few key products. The first one is the FLQ Doctorate of Business Administration and also we have the FLQ Master's Degree programs in three different areas. For the FLQ Doctorate programs, uh, learners with 25 years of experience can join us while for the Master's program, we will need 20 years of working experience and you can join us through your relevant working experience. The positioning of the ELM Graduate School will be focusing on the key senior executive market including leadership uh, positions and senior management in organizations. The reason why we are doing that is because with experiential learning, your experience will be a very influenced and important in the whole learning process. And together with this, we can create a very powerful network for all our learners, not only in Malaysia, but throughout the world. So the main attractiveness of the ELM Graduate School is through this experiential learning. I now invite all the learners not only from Malaysia but throughout the world, come to join the ELM Graduate School's experiential learning platform. At HELP University, we encourage our students to reach for the stars, to aim for success at the highest pinnacle of their careers. HELP prepares our students by equipping them with the refined soft skills required to function confidently in the highest echelons of power, be it in the business or corporate world or even politics. Toward this goal, HELP University goes the extra mile in educating our students on the delicate graces of fine dining etiquette included into the mandatory general studies or Mata Pladaran Umum MPU4 unit. Our students will get to enjoy our privileged relationship with the five-star Shangri-La Hotel and put to practice their training at the luxurious Lafitte restaurant. Good table manners are extremely important for business dining and entertaining. In an international and culturally diverse economy, a lack of awareness can cause offense or embarrassment. This part of the course, therefore, provides hands-on experience in table manners considered important by Malaysia's ethnic groups as well as Western style of dining. You will learn the protocols required when having a fine dining meal, from sitting, usage of napkins, cutlery and utensils, as well as all other forms of table manners befitting the prestige of a person of high esteem. When a student graduates and moves up the corporate ladder, he or she will need to be able to conduct themselves and perform confidently amongst their peers, people in the highest offices of business or government. At HELP University, we prepare all our students for success and leadership. Personally, I thought it was an eye-opening experience because I never thought that it would be a subject that I would have to take in university. And I didn't know that there was a certain manners that I need to follow. So yeah, this workshop has definitely brought a new insight for me to learn new things. I think it's very good for the students, for their future and their career. I found the dining etiquette workshop actually very enjoyable. Very interesting, very fun, very knowledgeable, which is very beneficial. I had a lot more fun than I thought I would. Getting to know these things and learning about these skills. 
found it really unusual that I, I would have to walk to the right side of my chair in order to sit down and then exit from the left. The numbers and types of cutlery that I need to use during fine dining because I didn't know there were actually so many like different forks and different knives. Uh, the position of the cutlery, it gives silent communication to the waiters and it, give, it gives them cue. The most interesting thing I learned will probably be that uh, the ways of communicating with people. I didn't know that there was a specific place where I should place my spoon and a specific way I should scoop the soup. How many nuances there were to like little little details that uh, went into fine dining etiquette. There's different ways to fold a napkin. Where you place a napkin also holds some kind of meaning. I think that in the future, when handling with business partners, corporate bosses, you'll be able to show your professionalism and mannerism when with others. Now I know how to eat confidently during a fine dining and have a more professional image. It really gives a lot of benefits for the students, for their careers also. The company, of course, would um, arrange these kind of events, so they already have an advantage. For students like us who might go into a more professional career and we might get more opportunities when we show our professionalism during dining. I have learned to present myself with proper posture and good fine dining etiquette and it also boosted my confidence in every aspect. To have the skills and the etiquette to compose yourself in a, this kind of situation shows a lot about your character and reflects a lot about yourself.
Okay guys, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, just uh, motivations for you all. Okay, let's we start our presentations. All right, uh, very good afternoon and welcome to HELP University. All right, in my brief today, I will touch the structure of the DSA and lastly, some inform, uh, in depth information on student affairs. All right, as I say, this is the structure of uh, Department of Student Affairs. Okay, Department of Student Affairs located mm -hmm. at three different locations. Okay, of course, uh, one year, ELM, DAC level one. Okay, Miss Anbalagi, stand up. Okay, my colleague, Miss Anbalagi, she is based.
Okay, okay, guys. Okay, uh, DAC located at three different locations. One, of course, here, ELM. So, Miss Anubaligi is here to cater for students' needs. And we also have a student affairs in Bisma Hub. Okay, I'm based in Bisma Hub. Okay, my office is located at level uh, ground floor. Okay, uh, Bisma Hub. And we also have a student affairs in Subang 2 campus. Okay, these are the family faces you come across uh, DSA. Okay, ini zaman muda. Eh? Okay, parking. Okay, these are the parking available for students. How many of you driving car? Only one? Where you guys park? Okay, I'll show you the place, the best place for you to park. All right, okay. Visma Help and KPD. Okay, I see there is no special rate for students. Okay, one hour is five ringgit. If you park uh, four hours, it's 20 ringgit. So I discourage to park here. Huh? Unless you are, you can afford, you can park. All right. Another option at uh, Visma Damansara. I think I think it's a walking distance from here, huh? 100 meter. Huh? Okay, you can see per entry is 10 ringgit. Okay, and they also have a season parking uh, for students, 159, 159 per month. And in order to get this parking, you have to register online, pay online, and get the access card online. Everything you have to do online, right? And we also have a parking in, yeah, okay, and business school. Okay, entry, same, similar, 10 ringgit, but season parking is slightly uh, higher, 190 per month. The procedures all same, okay. Register online, pay online, and get the uh, season card online. Okay, EC extracurricular activity. Okay, this is the main purpose of uh, Department of Student Affairs. Okay, when you inculcate various skills on you, social, interpersonal leadership, organizational, sporting. Sporting skills for those who are sportsmen, sportswomen. Okay. Okay. In DSA, we have uh, board games, foot, uh, foosball, pool, carom. Okay. When your leisure time, if you are free, you can drop by to DSA. You can enjoy all this. Okay. All free. Okay. Only one procedure, bring your student ID. Uh, just leave the student ID, then you can enjoy. Okay? All right. Same goes to music instruments. We have a music uh, room and we have a dance studio. Okay? Okay, next is games. Okay, sports carnival. Sports carnival is an inter-department competition organized every year over a series of 19 sports. Last we organized before COVID 2020. Half of the game we we managed to finish, other half was disrupted due to COVID. Okay, so uh, we are planning to finish off all the other half by this year, September. Okay, so you guys can join. So you guys have to represent your faculty, business. If you are business, you have to represent big business for A levels, uh, A levels, okay. Okay, next one is a Mapku Malaysian uh, Association Private College University. It's gone for 14 years. I'm proud to tell you that we are 11 years champions out of uh, 14 years. We are, we can say we are, we are good in the sports. Okay, we have a uh, top three. Always we are top three. Uh, sports. Any sportsmen here? Sure, God. Yeah. All right. Sukip. Sukip is like a mini Olympic Games for all the institutions in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, because uh, private universities, uh, government universities is combined. More than 100 institutions will join. Okay. This year we have a Sukip. After three years, this year we have a Sukip. It's on August. Okay. We will bring the potential athletes. 
uh, for this competition because the the level of uh, compet uh, the competition is high so we, we we will bring the best best of best for this uh, sukip okay represent help university okay ma siswa uh, similar to mapku okay how do activities we have a trackathon is a part and parcel of uh, sports carnival running in bukit gasin uh, you can join next year all right charity work our students are good in charity those who have a charity in heart please come forward do charity god will give you more right okay next is cross border program Cro cross border is a uh, culture and sports ex exchange with the uh, foreign universities huh? due to covid we cannot go anywhere we cannot travel anywhere hope hopefully we can travel uh, bring us uh, this program uh, continue next next year uh, not this year next year we have everything goes well all right uh sports scholarships those who are indulging in sports you can apply sports scholarship lowest requirement uh, requirement is mssm level if you represent your state in mssm you can apply sports scholarship okay state and national level only can apply recognition certificate those who are indulged in sports club and societies we are giving certificates uh okay next is local rental is available for loaning procedure you can drop by to dsa uh, for more details okay next is club and societies we have more than uh, 50 clubs social uh, entertainment club okay, religious you can join you can you can join any club there is no limit okay but one thing time management once you join you must manage your time your academic and your club activities okay student representing councils highest bodies in universities voice for students and ambassador for universities if you face any issues you go through them you will get the answer okay solution pass okay okay faculty student okay committees uh, looking into interest of dia students okay hmc so hmc students huh okay we have a sports club okay active uh, active sports club okay we have a social uh, club club and societies as I say, we have more than this adventures club. Those who like to go for hiking, caving, you can join adventure. Huh? Okay, some achievements. Okay, 2019. Okay, as I said, uh, Mapku, uh, we are 11 year champions out of 14 years. Okay, Masiswa Athletic Championships. We are very good in athletics. Okay, I'm the I'm the one coaching the team. Okay. Sigma Higher Education Sports Fest, basketball, table tennis, our national meets, state meets, Sea Games. Okay, Sea Games achievements. All right, our students. Okay. For this Sea Games 2021 Vietnam, okay, uh, they 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 did very well. They are final uh, finalists. Uh, they are finalists in their event. Our international meets. Uh, our student participation. Okay, this photo taken during our sports award day. The recognition for our students for their hard work throughout the year hmm? we conduct uh, every year okay you can see our taekwondo team you can see the blue waking the red the blue is help okay <laughs> okay our scene is all gone uh, now we are recruiting our new members for taekwondo so anyone interested you can join 
our basketball team too good and too tall any basketball player here don't shy nobody ah good you can join training athletics road relay chess frisbee sports carnival inter department competitions you will get free t-shirt okay so make sure you guys join okay this photo taken during our sports carnival basketball volleyball netball trackathon okay next is a club retreat programs our adventure clubs those who like to go for hiking caving those prefer to stay at home who likes aircon don't go you know why it's a suicide mission for you <laughs> okay cross border program okay culture as i say culture and uh, sports exchange with the foreign universities last one is 2019 at china okay, toast master those who like to improve your public speaking you can join toast master club active directive uh, you can join one world culture for internet students uh, singing and dancing uh, competitions all right sports carnival 2020 half of the game already done other half we're going to organize this year okay these are the events okay so start to train yourself prepare yourself okay Okay, our upcoming events. Kejona Olar Kai Piti Sakit Tu. Okay, we are leaving to Perlis tomorrow. Okay, 19 to 22 May. Next is Thailand ID, football, 4th and 5th June. Okay, we are doing a selection for our football team. Currently, we are playing in uh, IPT Division 2. Hmm? Basketball. Okay, on 11 June uh, for women and men's huh? one day selection. Athletics uh, to be confirmed. Okay. Sports carnivals on September, okay, October. Okay, we plan to organize two events for, for this year, DSA, close tournament. That is the cash prize. Okay. You can form your team. You don't need to represent your, your, your faculty. You can form. Okay. Soon we will the poster and details will be out. Okay. Basketball. Okay, next month. Okay. Football. Football either nine, seven aside or nine aside. Uh -huh. Okay. Suki. All sports is on August. Only athlete, those who are capable, we will bring. Uh -huh. okay contact us okay this is our facebook page please uh, follow our facebook page for the club list club and society list you can get it from uh, facebook okay our facebook we have posted in our dsa help university facebook you can get it from there okay any matter concerning um, dsa you can Contact through uh, email or you can drop by to DSA. Okay, last one. I show you two videos how we uh, train. Okay, I know you are here to excel. You want to excel in your academic, but you must excel in your uh, co uh, curriculum as well. So we are giving here a healthy lifestyle, not only uh, academic, we are giving a healthy lifestyle. It's free, you can join. Okay, let me show you the video. Control E, right? Control E.
疲れたもんですね This one for beginner. That's all. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Kanan. This mic's a bit soft. Uh, hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Are you guys asleep? Yes? Yes, okay. My name is Peter. Okay, I'm one of the lecturers in the Faculty of Arts and Communication. Okay, how many of y'all are in the Faculty of Arts and Communication. Is it I need the mic, apparently. There is how many of you? One, two, three, four, five, six. Coming in the coming semester. Okay. How many here are from business? Business, business. Oh my, 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 very many of y'all. Okay, good luck for your business degree. How many of y'all are from law? Law, 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 law. Just here. Okay, la, you all lawyers need to stick together. Huh? Okay, good luck for your law degree. Um, yes. Okay, so before I introduce the next speaker, which is Mr. Tiago, um, I have an announcement for you guys. So, for the law program, you guys have been doing your orientation since yesterday, right? Okay, so for business students, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to about 3.30, okay, you will be having your department orientation, which means you have to go to Wisma CL, not this building, that building, okay, at 9 o'clock and meet there at the auditorium 4, 
Yes. Auditorium 4, which is on level 4. Yay. Okay. For the Faculty of Arts and Communications, uh, the department orientation will be on level 8 of Wisma Health. Okay? Which is the building way over that side. Okay? So don't come here. Because getting grabbed from here is very expensive. So... Please keep that in mind. Please be there. Please be punctual also. Okay. So the FAC and the business department, department orientations will be starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Cool. Say like yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now let me introduce Mr. Tiagu from Career Sense. Okay. And he'll be talking to you about career development and your internships. Okay. Round of applause. Thanks, Peter. A very good afternoon. So I think we met yesterday, the law department, right? Okay. Um, welcome to help. So by the name of my department, you already know yeah, to get a sense of your career. I know it's the first year. You might be thinking why I need career science, right? Like I'm never thinking about my career. It is the first step for you to think about your career. Yeah. So um, we are a department parked under psychology, okay? Uh, long story short, those days, uh, psychology students had a bit of a tough time for looking for a job. I'm talking about 15 to 16 years ago. So what happened is this department was uh, formed and that time there's only one uh, lecturer, one admin staff that handled uh, psychology students for them to get a career opportunity or internship. Uh, now, we serve the whole uh, health university. So, uh, what we do, uh, these are our services. So, uh, career profiling, career consultation, traces, uh, surveys, and also internship and uh, employment support. So, all of this is done in our centers. Okay, Especially, we do more on career consultation. So if let's say if you have a doubt about your future or you are not sure that you are in the right course, if you are from A-levels and would like to come in, you know, you don't know which course to choose, we do provide career counselling. We have career counsellors with us. So, yeah. Have you decided? For sure, right? That's why you choose the course, right? You know, I want to do business, I want to do law, you know, a level and everything. But what are you going to do after you graduate? Are you going to take a break? We have students that take break. They don't look for jobs or a career. Some already third year before they graduate, they already got their placement. This is because they already done their internship. Yeah. So how important is internship? You will know while you are in your uh, course. So my thing for business is second year. It's a compulsory internship. I'm not sure for all faculty, but yeah. As I know, psychology, IT, and uh, business has a compulsory internship made to August every year. So for psychology, it's 440 hours. You need to get 440 hours. Uh, for at the moment, you guys won't be looking at career sense, but when it comes to your second year, yes, we will have students that will be looking for us. So... At the moment, we have active 
companies about 3000 you can name the big 10 big five all of them in our list so we have our graduate our alumni who are in dg shell petronas and also all the big companies you can name uh, marketing consultants and everything yeah 100 percent employability so that means once you are graduate we ensure that you are employed yeah it's not compulsory to be employed you can start your own business you can do your entrepreneurship you might have an idea but you don't know how to go about it we still can help you with that yeah so but then yes our aim is to get 100 percent, and this is where our tracer studies come in once you graduate we will do a tracer studies and from there we know what is our status at the current point we have 100 percent employability from help university so who we serve of course help university students there are certain services that needs to uh i would say we charge a very minimal cost and there are services that is uh, foc for you guys we also serve school leavers so if you have any members school uh, uh family members school leavers who don't know what course to choose or what to do after this we also provide uh career testing we do have a career profiling testing with us so yeah you can come to our center or drop us an email we will provide you all the details help graduates uh we have served uh, help graduates who have been in industry and also working adults uh, a bit, uh before covid i had one client 15 years in it industry but didn't want to do that after that for some reason they feel that that's not their path so they came and uh, meet us. We gave them some uh, career consulting. Uh, I think she's at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she is doing her uh, other business. I think she wants to venture into business. But 15 years, her earning was about 15K, if I'm not mistaken, 15 to 16K per month. So yeah, we have working adults who also approach us. Job seekers, so let's say looking for a job. You need your resume to be reviewed we do that also yeah also cvs um interviewing skills personality skills we do also uh, provide such services okay this is very very long time picture <laughs> that's my department director mr eric so yeah so our career counseling and consultation is the main services that we provide uh so you can see the caption there. So that's the main thing that we like to do. So ensure that you are in your cor your, on your correct pathway so that you can get your goals, your career goals uh, achieved. As I mentioned, career testing and assessment service. Uh, so we have a free interest test, which is in our website. Later I'll introduce, I mean, I will show you the website address. It's uh, interest test. It's not comprehensive, but it will indicate your interest. So it's an eight pager. Once you have done the test, in the last page, it will project your result. Let's say you, you don't know, I mean, you want more interpretation of the result, you can always drop an email to us. We will try to assign a counselor to you to interpret the test. It can be done virtually and face to face also. Yeah. So these are the uh, core of the tests that we are developed. And at the moment, we are very near to have help university will have its own career test. So this is uh, international career test that we have at the moment. But right now we have developed our own career test. So uh, soon everybody, uh, all the students will get the uh, pleasure of using it and you will get the result on the spot. Yeah, as for this, as I mentioned, um, training services for you guys. Lah. So resume writing, uh, how to attend an interview. If it is a video resume that you want to prepare, how to do it. So these kind of services that we provide. Em uh, employment and internship support, as I mentioned. So let's say if you're looking for a career and not sure, and we, you can come to us and we will provide the database to you. 
Uh, this is not a general email that we have. We have the PIC of the Human Resource Department in each uh, organization that we are allies with. And also for internship, um, because the importance of internship is uh, if it is a compulsory and this will give you a landing mark to know what are the skills that you need to develop. Yeah. Uh, why I'm telling this is academically you can be aligned with the um, current time, but then the skill set, you need to know what is the skill set because the organizations, they upgrade. Yeah, academically you can be strong, but if you don't have the proper skill set, you know, it's a bit hard for you to compete there. Yeah, because you must see that if you're going to a place for an interview, you are not the only one there. You're competing 30 to 40 people and also working adults, experienced adults. So how are you going to put yourself on top? Yeah, for example, you can go into LinkedIn. You can see in the job, uh, what are the skill set they need? You, yes, of course, I, they need a bachelor's degree, they need a master's, but then you see the skills skill set. So take your time, go online, research, do what are the skill set. There are a lot of free websites that does the skill set. Go ahead and try and see. You know, upon your academic, you can go for that. So this is where you will uh, sharpen your skills. You know, you might know something, but you need to get know it more because you need to stand out in your interview. You know, when you're presenting your resume, you need to be very strong. You know, you must say, I know A, I know B, I know C. Okay, I'm just going to skip this. Okay, our location, uh, we are at two places. Uh, like, just like Peter said, we are down, down. That was my help. Uh, level five. Uh, and also in Subang, uh, this is my office. Yeah, level six on top. So if you are at Subang, do drop by. Or you, if you are at Visma Help, then yes, we are at level five. Used to be uh, beside uh, DSA, but now it's level uh, A levels there. Yeah. So you're very sleepy. Huh? <laughs> Am I so? I mean, I know it's whole day. <laughs> so, you know, get the caption right, yeah, to understand. You have taken your first step in your life, you know, doing a degree. Congratulations on that. But there is more to see, yeah. These three years or four years being here, you're going to see a lot of things assignments, exams, you know, friends, and you know, a lot of things, a lot of lecturers. But then after that, you know, there's a working life there. It depends on yourself, how you're going to mold yourself from the academy and the, from the skill set you, that you have developed and how you're going to apply in the working world. Yeah, it's totally different, yeah, from being a student to a working life. You can ask your lecturers, yeah. We have some lecturers who studied here and are, you know, working here also, yeah. So this is, I'm not um, here to scare you or something, lah, you know, real life matter. Yeah. Are you guys using Instagram? Anybody? Anybody use Instagram here? Don't be shy. Can you scan this, please? If anybody is using. This is our Instagram ID. Lah. Yeah. I have two main reasons why I want you to scan this. Yeah. If you can't find, then just type careersense.help and you can find it. The first reason is my boss said I need to gain 2,000 followers. That's my KPI for this year so that I can get my bonus. Yeah? So, please. <laughs> okay, every orientation I will tell the same story, but I couldn't gain. Second point is, as I mentioned, the skill sets. So, whenever I I, I do the postings, yeah? When I do the postings, you can see what are the needs of the organization, yeah? That's the main thing because uh, organization, they develop certain projects and they want the skill sets to be there. The, uh, the knowledge of the thing. If let's say you're from IT, you know, you, you need to develop a lot of things. You need to study a lot of things. If you're from business, oh, I studied business, but 
they want certain skill set. As I mentioned, that's where you're going to put you on a on a path there to let know the employee. Okay, this person has this. I want this. Okay, maybe it's first year. You will get annoyed by my posting and everything, but you can learn what are the organizations looking for. Yeah. So it's just if you don't want to unfollow, don't unfollow now. Okay. Because <laughs> I I got see students followed and unfollowed on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's your wish. Like, I'm not forcing anybody, but yes, why I ask you to follow. And also we will update our events. You know, we have annual career fairs, internship fairs that are, at the moment is happening virtual. We haven't uh, passed two years because of COVID, no face to face. So you can join. Uh, it's free for our students. So it's done virtually. And also our internship fair is done virtually also at the moment. Uh, maybe next year, yeah, we might have our face-to-face uh, -face career fairs. So you can come in. It will happen here at ELM Level 5 Marketing for Year. And also one will be uh, in Subang. Any questions? Of course, no. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot and welcome to help. My name is Tiago. I'm from Career Sense Help University. Congratulations, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tiago. That was very informative. Remember, guys, your career is very important. Otherwise, how are you all going to be material girls? Um, okay. So, um, while he is um, <clears throat> ejecting himself, uh, how many of y'all came straight from SPM? Anyone? No? One. Two. Cool. <laughs> so, most of y'all uh, left your high school lives virtually, right? Y'all finished your high school via a computer screen? Did y'all? No? No, 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 no. Okay, some of y'all did. So for those who did finish their uh, schooling life um, by a screen, uh, this is going to be a very scary experience for you guys. Um, and y'all may have a lot of nerves. I will tell y'all that that is completely normal because when I first started lecturing, it was virtually. And then last semester was done physically and I was standing in front of my classroom and I was like, well, damn, these are real people. What do I do now? So I just went with it. Okay. So my advice to all you guys coming in is just go with it. Be yourselves because there's nobody better than yourselves. Okay. So next, I will invite. Hi. It's <laughs> my friend. Um, I will invite um, Mr. Michael, who is here, to talk to you about widening your options for studying abroad. Okay. Why, thank you so much, Mr. MC. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome to Help University. We, we are so glad that you guys are here physically. So uh, I'm the Deputy Manager of the Student Placement Center. And uh, right now, we are just going to talk about what are your options to study abroad. Now, before that, can I have a confirmation from the technician on one thing? All right, so I'm going to quickly show you a bit, real quick, and enjoy. Hi, welcome to Hope University Student Teaching Center. We are a one-stop center that will assist students in furthering their studies in Australia, Asia, and Asia. Hello, Jess. Oh, hi. Hi. We've been lost. How can I help you? Oh, I'm not lost. I'm just not sure where it's going to go about studies. No worries, the Placement Center will help you for free. We will come to you on your future study options and help you with the application. Okay, but I'm not sure if my test is the right one. We hold regular counseling sessions with our partner universities and you can also visit our educational fair to the help of the year. Before you start off, we will guide you on to the application as well. Oh, we will also inform you on immigration rules, flight tickets, and accommodation as well. No worries, bye, all the best, see you soon. 
First off, just want to let you know I'm the main actor of this video. Second of all, uh, for those who uh, feel that the video might be a little bit jittery, uh, you can check us out at our YouTube channel, uh, at the Help University YouTube channel. You can check us out. Um, my colleagues on the left and right will be distributing a paper, which uh, you'll be required to fill in the names if, say, for example, you're interested to transfer overseas. So um, the video for some might be entertaining, fun to a certain degree. But let me give you at least a little bit of a summary on how the Student Placement Center works. So we're a one-stop center. We are dedicated to assist you in furthering your studies overseas. So this ranges from providing personalized advice to providing um, cost in terms of education, living expenses, study pathways, so on. More on that in a bit. We also assist in application processes, acceptance, and also follow up in tuition fee up until the pre-departure briefing. So we assist from A to Z from the the inquiry process where you can ask every single question under the sun and don't worry, we will not bite until to the end, which is the visa application process. So that is pretty much that. Now, for some people who don't know how the application process work in overseas university, here's the chart. So basically you ask every single question you want with the credit transfer, which is right here in the first. Then after your inquiry has been made, you can submit an application to us uh, so that we can actually submit it to the university of your choice. Of course, um, the moment that you receive a conditional offer, uh, they will tell you the conditions you need to fulfill. Like for example, they may ask for academics, they might ask for math or maybe some English. A lot of jargons that may come in between, but normally what we do is we will dissect it and make it easier for you to understand on what you need to do to fulfill the conditions. Um, then we will, once you receive the full offer, you can proceed to acceptance and payment, which once you have done so, you will receive your ECOE for Australia, cars for UK, uh, visa accommodation and flight tickets can also be settled then. After you've completed the entire process, you can just proceed to fly over to uh, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. Now, for a full offer, it's much simpler, whereby after inquiries, you can submit an application, you receive the full offer, then you can proceed to payment acceptance, and finally, you can arrive straight to the university itself. Now, don't worry if this is so confusing for everyone. Normally, what we do is we will assist you in every step of the way, so please don't worry about that. Now, let's talk about the list of articulations that help with diversity. Now, before I begin this part, just want to let you guys know that in case you say, for example, the university that you wanted is not listed here in this list, or you feel that you want to explore different options in either Australia, UK, or New Zealand, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to assist you. Now, let's talk about business. Business has quite a lot of different types of pathways available from the group of eight, which is uh, ANU, Melbourne, New NSW, Queensland, to uh, modern universities like Macquarie, Griffith, and Queensland University of Technology. But for UK, we do have a few um, um, Russell groups, which is basically Cardiff and um, Bristol as well, with many others as well, with some modern universities as well. So if you're not so sure what this means or whether these universities would be applicable for you, you can just come talk to us on that. Uh, for those who are online and currently studying psychology, we, are, we have all the lists right here from the 2 plus 1 to the 1 plus 2 arrangement from uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. So if you have more for the information on, for those people online, you can check us out at the Subong 2 campus. No worries on that. Now, for the communication program back here, um, you, for those who are in communication, either online or right here in this, in this particular building um, hall, these are the articulated courses. Uh, these are the articulated universities we have from ranging from 1 plus 2 to 2 plus 1. Um, uh, those who are studying the diploma, there's a 2 plus 2 program as well. So no worries on that. Next will be Bachelor of IT for those at home who are currently studying in the Subantu campus for the information technology course. This is the university that's affiliated 
uh, with the university. We also have Adelaide as well, which is pretty nice. Next, we have the UK degree transfer program. This is for law students who are either here or online. These are the university that offers the one plus two plus one arrangement. If say, for example, you're the export at the university, reach out to us. Another one is the Bachelor of uh, Early Childhood Education. We only have two for one, uh, one plus two, which is these and Essex. So we talk about all this, okay, where to go? You know, like we, we are going to UK, Australia, New Zealand, you know, all this stuff. What are the costs? So for Australia, basically, if we actually uh, consider the tuition fee ranging from 30 to 47K and living expenses at 25K, the estimation uh, at, as per exchange rate of 3.0, Will be fifty thousand to seventy-two thousand Aussie dollars, which is equivalent to one hundred fifty to two hundred and sixteen k Malaysian ringgit. Now, this uh, just to let you know that the tuition fee tends to change from time to time um, due to either exchange rate or some universities increase prices here and there on an annual basis. But this is just a rough estimation for a more detailed analysis or at least some form of detailed pricing. That will be something that we can help you later on. The same goes to the United Kingdom. Uh, so the range is from twelve to 25k pounds and living expenses outside is about 9207 while well, inside London is 12006 so the estimation cost is 12, uh, 21207 to 37006 pounds which is equivalent roughly to 120k to 210k as an estimate now um, something i need to point out this does not include medicine dentistry and veterinary science which which is applicable to both australia and my next slide which is new zealand New Zealand uh, roughly is from ranging from 15k to 27k for living expenses. Well, tuition fee roughly should be 22 to 32k, could be more, could be less, depending. With the exchange rate at 2.9, the rough estimation is for 110 Malaysian ringgit to 170k Malaysian ringgit. Now, we talk about okay, cost, money, numbers. What's the scholarship that's provided? So let me give you a rundown. So the scholarships available for Australian university ranges from percentage base to number base. The percentage base, for example, and this is for this year, by the way, uh, the UK Global Connect Scholarship for articulated courses gives a quantum of, let's say, about 10 to 25%, depending on the faculty, depends on the course, depends on many other things. Well, the Help UK Scholarship is from 25% up to 100% for business students only. Now, these things changes from time to time, uh, but this is the, uh, the scholarship for this year. Um, another example I can give you is uh, UNIL South Wales. If say, for example, you do not have the full scholarship, you can go for at least uh, five to 10K um, tuition fee waiver, which is only a one-time thing. Now, these are the other ones as well. Say, for example, if you want more updated information about the scholarship that's available, you can just feel free to come to us. Uh, we can actually give you an updated one as it comes. Uh, this is also a few more from Griffith, QUT, and uh, UTS. Um, for example, QUT basically gives you 25% for the first year. Any subsequent year, you need to maintain a 5 for 5 out of 7 for the studies. More information, you can talk to us. This is for UK. UK generally would be about um, either number of percentage, very similar to Australia. The difference is that um, the requirements may or may not be so strict. So the, what you see right here in the, on the screen are basically the quantum for the scholarship value, roughly about one, two K-ish. Or you can, go, you can get a 10% from Leeds as well if you do very well for psychology, of course. Uh, another one right here, this is basically a few scholarships we have for the UK universities. So the range is from percentage based to maybe say number based. So um, for, as I say right now, this is for the September 2022 intake. In case you want to know more, you can just talk to us. A uh, few more here. Uh, I'm not going to go too much on this, but this is for law. Students who are going for law right at home or right here in this, uh, in this hall, you basically can get these scholarships for 2022. For more information, talk to us. Now, I've talked about numbers. I've talked about articulation. I've talked about a lot of things. Let us now go to the benefits. First of all, adding value to your degree. Now. Here at Help University, the moment you enter into a university, you need to know how to utilize the facilities and many things. And I just want to be slightly personal here. I actually am a help student myself. I studied psychology. Um, I had a really good time here at Help. And But then the thing is, you can't just study your course and expect miracles. You need to really be engaged with your community. You need to be ensured that you meet up with certain facilities. 
But the thing is, for overseas universities, they do have a thing called a careers team. They will actually provide, be able to give you more information on how to improve your CV and as we actually interviewing skills as well. Because a lot of times, and this is coming from me, of course, uh, I've noticed that many students didn't do well only in the interviewing part. It's like they stumble and like, um, I don't know how to answer that question. Um, okay, cool. So, um, and many other extracurricular activities and also apply for internship as well. So that's one thing. Gaining new perspective of the world, it gives you an opportunity for students to see and interact with different cultures and a hands-on experience to understand different perspective uh, from different types of people. Um, because you need to actually gain different perspectives in order for you to be able to have a more holistic learning experience. Sharpening language and communication skills. Okay, for those who don't really have a really good command of English, it's okay. Normally, uh, English, you can actually gain it as you go by. So um, if you speak in different languages fluently and consistently practice, you should be fine. Um, another one is about ethics and cultures. Also, again, broadening your perspective in terms of being able to learn about how to effectively communicate with people and be able to um, add value when it comes to have additional soft skills as well. Now, creating network connection. Of course, for those who are in business, you got to know how to communicate with every single person and network with different types of people. This is very important. Uh, you get to meet with different types of people as well. Now, events. Real quick. We do have something called the... Hmm. Yes, correct. So we have a monthly info session, which I will explain in a bit. Uh, with the representative from universities overseas. And we have two events that's held twice a year. One is the study in Australia, UK, and New Zealand fair. Rumors could be in November. Make sure you put your calendars up. And as well as the pre-departure briefing, where we'll tell you more about um, flights, accommodation, and also visa as well. The monthly county session uh, coming up for me, we have today uh, with the University of Hertfordshire, which is located right here in this building. Our student placement center is actually at level five at ELM, right there in this building. So please proceed to go down to level five. Ask where the student placement center you can come visit us. More than happy to assist you in any way. Those who are interested to learn more about UK, you can start with Hope for sure first. Tomorrow we have Coventry, uh, 130 to 3, and many others. For those who are at home who are currently studying at uh, the Subang 2 campus, these are also available for you as well. Please let us know so that we can assist you. This is also for the events for the month of June as well, ranging uh, from the 8th of June to the 15th of June. We have a lot of different uh, things lined up. Say, for example, there are more events coming up in the middle. We will update you either in your faculty Facebook pages or any uh, of our social medias. So no worries there. Now, for those who are at home who are unable to fill the form in which I've mentioned just now, please feel free to scan this QR code and then um, basically you can fill the form right and then. Now, I'll give you 10 seconds. Is everybody okay? It looks like you guys are kind of sleepy. Is it? Are you guys okay? All good? All right, cool. Mine is actually... Huh, interesting. Okay, cool. Why is... Hmm, okay, cool. Mine is actually done, which is very weird because it closed on me. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to show it again real quick. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to say up front that um, we, that the, let me see here. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to say up front, we are located either at the ELM campus right here, level five. We're at the corner in case you do not know. Or you can visit us at the Subang 2 uh, Marketing Lounge that is located in the Student Lounge itself. Uh, that is our place. Um, in case you would like to know more about us, you can contact us at spc at help.edu.my. I repeat, spc at help.edu.my. Very simple, very easy uh, part as well. Um, so this is our details. Uh, again, once again, Yellen Business School Level 5 and Subang 2 Campus Marketing Department. This is our number and email right there and then. So... I'm afraid that we do not have enough time to ask, uh, for questions. But in case you want to ask, feel free to ask. Come over to our office. We're more than happy to welcome you. Welcome to Help University, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael. <laughs> <clears throat> have you guys ever been gaming and then your ping goes up to 999? 
That's the video just now. Okay, so um, moving on to the next one, we have Miss Amanina coming in for uh, the Department of Transportation to give a briefing on transportation because that's something you'll need to do now that you're coming to face-to-face -to -face classes. So while she sets up, how many of y'all play Genshin? Please put up your hands. Okay, okay. Who are ah, not on the screen? Yes. Okay. Whoever plays Genshin, please go back and do your daily comms. Okay. Don't miss that out. Get your primos. Yes, we love getting primos. There's a new character coming out soon. Please uh, don't wail for him. Okay. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Miss Amalina. Okay. Give a round of applause, please. Thank you. Yes. yes. Okay. Come. Yes. Nice. Love it. Yes. I thought she was a student at first. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone. My name is Amanina. You can call me Nina. Uh, I'm on behalf of Transport Unit, so I will be presenting um briefing on you on the transport, which is important for you guys to know your shuttle schedule that you want to go to class every day within the campus. So we have shuttles for Pusat Banda Damansara, which is here, and Subang Campus. This is our organization chart, uh, our director, manager, coordinator, and our main drivers. Okay, this is um, uh, Pusat Bandar Damansara Campus Shuttle. Uh, for you guys who are studying at ELM, Wisma CL, and Wisma Health, you guys can take uh, this shuttle, which start from ELM here, and then Tensmantan, then we go to Health Residence, then we go to Twins and Subway and LM. So this is the schedule from, we have two shuttles from 7.32 a.m. and 7.35 until 7 p.m. So you can follow this schedule uh, if you guys want to go to any of your preferred locations. So this is the pickup points. The first one is at LM. Mm, this one is at level LL, but we... We advise you to go to the bus stop at the uh, ELM. So the shuttle van will wait for you there. Then they go to Tensamantan. Then they go to D28, Head Residence. And Subway. So at Subway, for everyone of you who want to go to Isma Help, you can stop at Subway and just walk around two, three minutes to, uh, to Isma Help. Okay, next is... For Subang Campus, this is the schedule. Uh, we start from Subampus, then Marsens, we go to HP Villa, Atria, Jala Uranus, and back to Subang Campus. So this is the schedule and the pickup points from Subang Residence, HP Villa, Atria, Jala Uranus, and back to Subang Campus. So next one is the Klana Jaya Shuttle. Uh, for anyone of you who are uh, taking LRT, KTM, uh, you can follow the schedule. We also have shuttle uh, only for two slots in the morning and two slots in the evening. This is the pickup point for all the stations. Uh, we also have uh, Kwasa Central MRT. Uh, you guys can stop at Kwasa Central MRT, then we have uh, shuttle van waiting for you there, but only at two slots in the morning and three slots in the evening. Okay, here is our contact. Our office is located at CL, Wisma CL level P2, and Wisma Help at LC floor. This is our Mr. Yogi's contact number if you have any emergency uh, inquiry or questions. Also, we have Telegram, which uh, we advise you to follow and join this group because we always update uh, all the shuttle information either like for example um, we can sell uh, the shuttle so you can keep updated on the information so I will give you some time to join the telegram group Or you can take picture before you install the Telegram application. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all from me. Uh, I wish you good luck. Everyone take care and stay safe. Okay, short, sweet, love it. Thank you, Miss Amanina. Okay, so guys, uh, just now, uh, Mr. Michael handed out a form. Did you all give it back to him? Where is it? Where the form? Okay, so once uh, you're done, is everyone done? There's another one there. Okay, so please hand it over there. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'll come, I'll come, I'll come. It's, it's afternoon, I get it. Okay, so everyone has done this, yeah? Yes? Okay, I'll take it as a yes. <laughs> okay, so next, let me introduce Miss Yumi Lin. Okay, to, she's from the Corporate Information Center, and she's going to talk to you guys about cybersecurity because nothing is safe. Okay, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mei Lin. There are about four or five millions here. I lose track. So if anybody needs me, ask for the CIC Mei Lin, all right? Um, welcome to Health University. Short and sweet, I hope. Uh, number one, you guys, everything is online, yeah? Every single thing. So um, helplife.edu.my, that's your email address. Your login and your credentials, you would have registered with us with the uh, personal email address. Your credentials would have been sent there. Um, I know I'm skipping ahead a bit, but um, you're going to need this email more than anything else. Help desk at help life. Do you do the MY? That's the one. Um, the LMS is not yet hooked up to our main system. So those of you running, learning uh, uh, your courses, your slides, um, your Teams meetings, your classroom information, your assignments, etc. Anybody who's running on LMS, that's a, still a separate email account. You do have to reach out if you're from logging in. Everything else, email to the help desk. We're like a one-stop center. Problems you're not sure how to get to. My rapid, we've answered those questions too. Um, what you need to get your bus passes, your LRT passes, your, you name it. We'll try and get you, even if we're not the right person, people to answer you directly, we'll get you hooked up to anybody that you, um, that anyone else that you might need that might have the information. So, helpdesk at helplife.edu.my. Um, that's the email address that everybody sends everything to. We do have a ticketing system, so you will be kept in contact um, throughout the process. We'll reply you, we'll give you a you can even ask, hey, why so slow, blah, blah, blah. Um, everything works on cyber speed nowadays, but uh, I'm quite old. <laughs> so sometimes I do need sleep. Um, sorry for skipping ahead. Let's go, go back to the beginning. All right. Um, everything's complex now, same as everyone else. So passwords cannot be too short. They have to be um, eight characters or longer. You need to have complexity. Please don't use P L I S S S W zero R T. Everybody does that. I think that was the biggest password in Southeast Asia. So try and keep something personal, something that you'll be that you'll try and remember. Otherwise, we have S S P R. You don't have to. I know you guys do assignments still very late. Um, your hours are different from office hours. So register for self-service password reset the minute you can. That way you can reset it anytime you want. You've forgotten, you've got too many, um, whatever it is that you need. SSPR is the one. Um, easy proxy for your online libraries. The password is still reset every 90 days. So you might have to still reset your passwords until and unless they upgrade their systems. And you can do that independently anytime you want. In the middle of assignment at 11 p.m., not a problem. 2 a.m., rushing to submit, not a problem. You don't have to wait for us to open. And more importantly, um, you solve it all yourself. Cool? Um, last month, there was an email circulating. Cheap YU beef, um, free Iberico, 
bubble tea, just have to log in, like our Facebook, like this, like that. Some of our students did get caught in that scam. The emails got hacked and they spam only about 2,000 of their friends and their accounts got banned. If it seems to be too good, don't believe it. <laughs> Nobody gives already free bubble tea or 50% uh, off YU or Iberico. I mean, it's just too good to be true. Um, the, uh, your email accounts are linked to your MyPride. They are linked to your banking information if you bank online with us. There is sensitive info that now needs to be protected. Same thing on your SMSs, same emails. No prince is going to come and want to marry you <laughs> and take you off somewhere. Do not give them bank information. Um, if it's from the Agong, he's not going to give you anything free either. He's just going to spam your handphone number after that. So it's, it's it seems to be all common sense, but sometimes the, the offer is just too good and we're so tempted to click. So don't do it. Yeah. That's all the cybersecurity advice <laughs> we're going to give it to you. Just don't do it. It seems too good to be true. Help Life, um, Help Desk at Help Life, forward the email to us. If it looks like it's from the registry, if it looks like it's from your department, you need to repay to a different link. Um, you need to re-sign up for all your subjects. Uh, we're gonna not going to do that to you via email, all right? It's just not going to happen. If you're at all unsure, just send it to Help Desk at Help Life. We'll verify it for you, no matter how many people we have to call, all right? Just keep yourself safe out there. <sighs> Imitation websites. It looks like us, it sounds like us, but it ain't us. Antivirus security settings. Again, it just seems like a lot of common sense, so make it more common. Security apps. If you install this app, you will get 50% off on your next purchase at McDonald's. No, you won't. Please don't do it. Simply not, especially if when you click on the link and it goes to Google Play and Google Play says, this one doesn't have security, do you still want to install? And you say yes. Please don't do it. Useful links we've been through already. Um, I want to add one thing. Because um, everybody is very eager to get back to face-to-face, uh, -to, -face, to getting marketing done, to getting more sales, to getting people out there and out about again, to get um, reaching out to their new audiences. We sometimes get um, companies con contacting us, right, and offering uh, student packages or staff packages or um, internships. We, we internships we will siphon to the student placement center and the academic departments. But if you pop by the help desk in any building, if we get any offers from HP or Apple or um, Acer or whoever it is, right? We will generally post um, fly, uh, flyers or, or some sort of signs up on the help desk so you can get a better deal if you're looking to upgrade. Um, you can get Let's see what other offers they are, specifically if you're an academic student or whether you're a part-time student or whatever it is, okay? But relevant offers, we they're not linked to help at all, so we don't post them on our Facebook or on our websites, right? Because we are not the ones selling it. But if you pop by the help desk every now and again, there might be offers that you might find interesting. Um, they might not be <laughs> Genshin type of uh, of uh, units, lah. you won't be able to play Maple on it or something, lah. but they will certainly be able to help you facilitate your academic work and your research and any work that you need to do. So those offers, like I said, they're not published by us, but we will put notices up on the help desk or you can always inquire with them. Okie dokie. Any questions? Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so guys, we're almost done with the day, okay? We just have two more speakers, and then you guys can go on your way. Now, um, how many international students are there here? International students? Okay. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Malaysia. It's very hot. Okay. 
So now we are going to have our next speaker, who is Mr. El Cheong. Okay, he is here from the uh, International Student Services to talk to you. After that, we will have one more speaker. Okay, and then we'll end the day. Okay, for today. So, Mr. El Cheong. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, although this presentation is mainly targeted to international students, but the rest of you, uh, Malaysian, please stay on and I wish you will get to have a better understanding on our international students' needs and concerns. All right, so let's get started. Now, International Student Services Department, it's actually quite a long name for a department, so we usually shorten it to ISSD. Now, what for international students, what you must have in order to start to have temporary online classes. First of all, please refer to your offer letter. Some offer letters are mentioned, they are given firm offer, whereas others are given conditional offer with a condition that you must have achieved the minimum English proficiency. Please refer to that. You, if you have received a conditional offer, please make sure you have achieved the English, either the IELTS or TOEFL or MOET before you'll be allowed to enroll into your main course. I believe if you are here today, that means you are, have basically achieved the minimum English requirement. Is there anyone that has the understanding you need to do your English or achieve your English proficiency? I suppose not. Okay. And please also sign your declaration form, which we have already forwarded you. If you haven't received it already, please inform us. We will send it to you. You need to sign this before your subject enrollment. And you also need to make all the payment, the uh, administration fees. Basically, we have already received your payment before you will, we will receive you from the airport. Okay. Now, uh, from the immigration viewpoint, international students are permitted to enter Malaysia since last year, January, although because of the situation, the uncertainty and things like that, many of you only start to join now or you probably only apply beginning this year or somewhere last year. But last but not least, you're welcome. Welcome to Malaysia and welcome to help. And some of you may have a uh, any of you have started enrollment since last semester or earlier? Is there anyone? Also, this will be your first semester. Is that right? Okay. Uh, second thing is international student. We insist that student, international students to be fully vaccinated before we allow you to come in. Although the immigration doesn't specifically, I show you the next slide. Okay. If you look at this table, you will see two different roles. Those who are fully vaccinated, they do not need to do a pre-arrival test, post-arrival test, and quarantine. If you do not have full vaccination, which is in the second row, partially are not vaccinated, they will need to do a test before their flight, they need to do a test after they landed in, at the airport, they need to go for five days quarantine. So I believe all of you have already fulfilled the full vaccination requirement. Now I'll go back to the previous slide. Now, uh, Immigration Department issues eval, which is a visa approval letter. Then you're here today. So because you have given us your address in Malaysia, right? Uh, how many of you actually stays at D28? And how many? Can I show a hand D28? Okay. So just now, my colleague has explained to you the shuttle schedule. So please find it useful to, to travel between where you're staying and here. Okay. Now, uh, student will advise on current entry process. Uh, we have already done that. That's why you are here. This slide is generally not only for those of you currently here, because we still have some international students in their home country because of the delay or whatever not on the visa approval letter, they are still left in a bad home country. They will probably arrive here one, two weeks or even three weeks later. Then they will be here to join you for face-to-face -face classes. Okay, next. 
student, new student arrival. Uh, how many of you has already arrived for a week or more? Can you please show a hand? Uh, more than a week. So the rest who doesn't raise your hand, that means you have just arrived quite recently? Is it true? Uh, these are the things that you will need to do. Those who have arrived for a week, probably you have done all this already, or at least half of it. First thing is your health examination. We'll take you to a clinic appointed by EMGS to do your health check. Then we'll do a bit of briefing, which is a very, very similar to what I'm explaining to you today, okay? which is done by my colleague, Mr. Joshua. And next thing is we will send your passport to EMGS to do the visa at the immigration department. So during this point of time, please do not make any travel arrangement, even though you may have a little longer break, because if you do not have your passport, you will not be able to travel, right? And once your passport is ready with the student visa, we'll inform you, please come forward to ISSD at level UL, just two floors down from here, to collect your passport and eventually your immigration card and also your insurance card, right? And please carry your insurance card and your immigration card with you. It is actually mainly for your convenience. With this card, if you are traveling within Klangberry area, I mean, that is Kuala Lumpur, you do not need to carry your original passport every day in and out. But if you're traveling further, let's say you're going to north of Malaysia or the other part of Malaysia, which is the Sabah and Sarawak, you need to carry your passport. Otherwise, you may not be able to board your flight. Let alone if you're going outside of Malaysia, you definitely need your passport. <laughs> Otherwise, the airport immigration will not let you pass. Right? Next thing is visa renewal. Now, when you collect your passport, you will receive one year of student visa from now until May or probably June, depending when the immigration finished the process. So a year later is about time you need to prepare for visa renewal. How many of you are doing diploma and how many of you are doing degree? Can you show a hand diploma? Basically, diploma is two years, okay? Generally, loosely rather, and degree will take three years. Now, because as I mentioned, your student visa is on an annual basis. So one year later from now, you need to do a visa renewal. You do it annually until you finish your study. And three months before your visa expiry, when you receive your passport, you will know when your visa will expire. Probably May next year, say 25th May, 2023. Three months, that is February 2023, you receive an email from ISSD. It's generated every month. Inform you or rather alerting you is about time you need to prepare for your visa renewal. Now, um, please contact us either by email. I'll show you our email address later on at the, on the in the last slide. Or you can personally come to drop by my office to inquire how to go about what you need to prepare and things like that for visa renewal. And again, when you do not have your passport, Please do not make any travel. I do not. We have a few, not many, a few cases. I know students doing this area. Oh, I want to travel here. I want to have holiday there. I cannot promise you that your passport will be ready when you want to fly. Right? So try to avoid it unless it's really, really critical and an emergency. You have some emergency matter. You need to fly home to do to attend to something. We'll try to accommodate. Or we'll give you an alternative how to go about it. Right now, visa renewal. What are the things you need to generate? We're going to repeat this when you do your visa renewal, but I'm going to give you a preview of all this. First thing, your passport must be valid for not less than 18 months because you're doing a visa renewal for another year. Generally, internationally, passport validity anything less than six months, you cannot travel already, except you're flying to your home country. That applies to Malaysia. Eh? If you're going to Singapore with a passport less than six months, they are not going to allow you in. Okay, if you're not familiar with that. So your passport for visa renewal purpose, international student, please make sure your passport validity is less than 18 months. If it's anything less than 18 months, you can get a new passport, renew at your embassy in Malaysia. 
or if you happen to be in your home country you can do it in your your respective authority usually it's the immigration department in your home country okay check with us before you travel out so we'll give you a, a, a some options or even some sessions right? uh, do not come at the very last moment and then because every process will take time your embassy your immigration department emgs immigration will need time to process things so give us more time the sooner you inquire even though you may not execute it immediately at least you have more time you're more aware of what to expect understand okay now conditions of the passports are important not only the validity your passport must be in fairly good condition not we have some passport which are very torn wet washed in the washing machine i mean sometimes you put your passport especially guys you put probably for convenience put in a back pocket and you really heavy. you you try to avoid that of course but it happened unfortunately you have to replace your passport you can, before you can do anything right so ensure the the safety of your passport do not lose it easily okay and maintain the the condition of your passport because you have seen very very terrible condition passport seriously i've got one passport that accidentally put in the washing machine all the pages gone except the cover i don't know the whole all the pages seems to have melted away in the washing machine so no choice okay another thing if you look at the yellow box the last one your password must have at least five minimum five blank pages before we can do anything otherwise the immigration will not process any additional because they want the blank pages partly for the visa partly for your exit and entry you will need to have blank pages for stamping okay now uh damaged passport will be rejected by immigration for any process now um now this thing for visa renewal there are a few conditions set by the immigration uh actually three of them i i, I go through it and then i go into the detail okay now first thing your cgpa you will come to know your cgpa calculation during your briefing tomorrow because this is academic okay generally immigration will need at least cgpa because all of you are doing either a diploma or degree that means it's a two uh, it's a two or three years so the postgraduate doesn't apply to you you will need to have at least 2.0 out of the full 4.0 cgpa it's not too stringent 50 percent okay but this is the more difficult part you must have your attendance of minimum 80 percent throughout your study before the immigration is going to allow you to renew your visa we have students who have got only 90 sorry 79 percent of attendance and the visa renewal get rejected same thing the cgpa 1.99 get visa rejected so maintain this minimum requirement for your student visa because we have student visa rejected they have to go home reapply new student visa and there's no guarantee the new visa will be approved so there will be a disruption or even outright stop of the study with us okay and you must maintain your enrollment that means every semester please enroll subject same thing if a student doesn't enroll subject in any particular semester the immigration may not approve your student visa renewal last thing exceed the duration i've already mentioned diploma january is two years degree is three years so if a student cannot finish the study within the two or three years immigration has the right to reject visa renewal but usually they are quite reasonable as long as it doesn't exist too long like two year course take five years it's not too impressive <laughs> the immigration may not want to renew already okay if you exceed that duration is, is is getting more and more difficult to do a visa renewal now deferment we understand we have students due to circum circum uh, certain circumstances they cannot study for one particular semester some family emergency back home health reason whatever we allow that but the student need to apply with the department for approval first and 
if we uh, the department allow the student we need to go back to home country for that particular semester and fly back in again to continue later on uh, one very important point that I want to stress on student visa holders are not allowed to work in Malaysia generally in most other countries unless it's a different thing a person who wants to work in Malaysia or run a business that they actually need to get an employment pass okay now uh, visa cancellation when you finish your study before you fly home please come forward to ISSD again to do a visa cancellation before you fly home a month before you do that so that we advise you what to do okay how to track your visa process there's a website called Education Malaysia. If you just Google Education Malaysia Global Services, you'll find this website. Key in your passport number, your nationality. You key in your visa application, you'll be able to monitor. Uh, like Jawad. Jawad, are you here? Okay. Jawad Anane Ayane is in Subang, sorry. Uh, Jawad. So we are going to submit your passport to EM just tomorrow. So from then, you will see the percentage of progress. I beg your pardon? I know, but your passport is still in my office because they haven't asked for it. Tomorrow only we'll give it to them. Okay? So if they do not want it, I give it to them, they won't take your passport as well because they have, you have just cleared your health examination yesterday. Okay? So from tomorrow onwards, you will see the progress from 50%, move to 60, 70, and on. Okay? When it reaches 100%, there is no, you know, your passport is in our hand already, and then you can come. We will still email you. You can come to collect it later on. Okay. Uh, EMGS website. This is how it looks like. You just go into this. You will have your passport number, nationality, and the type of visa uh, part of process. Now, how to contact ISSD? We have two campuses, one here and one in Subang. These are the addresses. And both of us are sharing the same email address, which is ISSD at help.edu. Dot my. If you want a copy of this slide, will be. I'm I'm happy to share with you so that you can re, re, have some record of what I've explained to you. Okay, is there anything you would like to know, or you can drop us a line. We'll answer you by email, or you can stop by and things like that. Open to everyone, Malaysian. If you have anything to ask. Okay. Uh. By the way, I'd just like to know, uh, is Taise Horino here? I'm looking for two students. And Suzuka. Probably not. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, we're almost at the end, guys. Uh, for all Malaysian students, uh, this is a word of advice. Please go and check on the status of your passports or so because if you want to travel to Thailand, la, Bali, la, all those places, you obviously need a passport. Okay, so for the final presentation for today, we have Miss Suzanne. Okay, I'm sure you've seen her around today. She's from the registry department. She's a very nice person, so treat her well, okay? Miss Suzanne? Okay, good afternoon, students. Okay, today I'm going to share to you about PTPTN um, application. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, first of all, uh, as you can see here, PTPTN online application for May intake. The opening dates are first batch will be on 1st May 2022 and the closing will be 31st of May. Okay, and second batch will be 1st June. Uh, and the closing will be 30th June. So by now, actually, you guys can uh, start to apply for PTPTN if you, if you want to apply, okay? Then the second one. Okay, before the application, what are the procedures? Okay, first, you must open a personal saving account at CIMB only. Okay, PTPTN. Sorry, I opened my mask. Huh? Okay. PTPTN only accept uh, CIMB bank for the disbursement purpose, okay? So, uh, please don't open any other bank, only go for CIMB, okay? 
and open a SSPN scheme simpanan pendidikan nasional. Okay, online at PTPTN website. Okay, this is the website where you can find the SSPN um, details. Okay, and the third one buy a PTPTN pin number. Okay, at BSN. Okay, this pin number can be get at BSN only, or you can buy online at PTPTN website. So this is uh, this will be the link for you. Okay, actually, if you go to pdbn.gov.my, you can find all the details there. Okay, the third one. Okay, the uh, steps for PTPTN online application. So you need to log in to PTPTN website. So this is the website link. Then second, you need to complete the online application form. Okay, when you when you download the online application form, you can see the uh, application guidelines there. Okay. So you must refer to the Appendix A, PTPTN Online Application Guidelines. Okay, the third one, submit your online application before the closing date. So the dates are first batch, 31st May, and second one will be 30th of June. Okay, check PTPTN Online Application Status. So after seven working days from the closing date, into the log on to the PTPTN website. Okay, to check if your application has been approved or rejected. So, if still in process, it will show sedang di process. If uh, it's approved, you will uh, it will show as diluluskan. Okay. Submission of PTPTN agreements. Okay, once it's approved, okay, registry side will send an email regarding submission of PTPTN documents. Okay. Uh, that one is once uh, we receive the list from the PTPTN from uh, for the approval student list lah. Okay, from uh, please check your registered email with PTPTN regularly. Okay, download the PTPTN agreement and print out for two sets. Okay, this one also you need to uh, refer to the Appendix B when you go to the website there. You download, then you have to refer to Appendix B. Okay. So buy two pieces of stem hasil. This is very important. Huh? Two pieces of stem hasil. It will cost you 10 ringgit each. Okay. And also the third one will be help university offer letter. Okay. You all have your offer letter, right? Hello. Yes. So this is very important. Huh? Okay. So all completed agreement and attachment are to be sent by the student to any nearby PTPTN office. Okay, once you're done, complete everything, you just submit to the PTPTN office. Frequently asked questions. So we have a few questions here. Okay. Can I change a program or major after my PTPTN loan has been approved? Okay. The answer will be you are not encouraged to change the program or major after your loans has been approved by PTPTN. However, if you need or if you want to still change the program, you may need to reapply the PTPTN loan once your major or program has been approved by the uni. Okay? That means it's another process you have to wait. Huh? Okay? So uh, you must be uh, very, I mean, confirm lah before you apply for your PTPTN, whether you want to apply for this program or you want to change your program. Okay? So the second one will be, do students need to pay the tuition fees whilst applying for the PTPTN loan? While waiting for your PTPTN loan, do you need to pay? Yes, students who are applying for the PTPTN loan, yeah, are required to pay the recurrent outstanding fees whenever it is due. Okay, confirmation of receiving first PTPTN payment are only upon final approval from PTPT after successful submission of documents. So while waiting for your PTPTN, if you have a due, okay, you must make payment. Okay, once the PTPTN is in, then you have a uh, I mean, uh, still have outstanding, you can pay from that. Okay, because the payment will be, uh, they will send to your account directly, to your CIMB account, okay? How do I apply if I have previous loan from PTPTN? Okay, applicable for those with previous PTPTN loan for diploma only. Okay, new application can only be made after the closure of previous loan. Status must change to Tamat Pembiayaan. Let's say you have you already have PTPT in your diploma. Now you're applying for degree. But you must make sure your diploma one is Tamat Pembiayaan. The status must be there. Okay. This one you must check in the website. PTPT website. Okay. Step two. 
buy a new PIN number from Bank Simpanan National. Okay, then apply within the next application date. Okay, if you already had the CIMB business saving account and SSPN account, please update in the PTPTN online application. Okay. Okay, another question. When is the expected dis disbursement of PTPTN loan? Okay, so you can see the dates there. Okay, first batch, second batch. This is the payment will be paid to the student directly. Okay, the loan will be credited into the student's personal saving account by CIMB. First payment will be made within one month after the successful submission of the documents to PTPTN. Okay. Subsequent payments will be made three times per academic year. Okay, you can refer to this. And also this one, uh, pay, this payment schedule is subject to change also. Okay, it depends on PTPTN. Ah, okay, another important is the subsequent payment will be made available after PTPTN receives the confirmation from the university that the student is progressing into the following semester and obtain GPA of 2 and above or pass in the previous semester. So for you to get your PTPTN loan, it's very important to uh, sustain your GPA level. Okay, 2 and above. What are the terms and conditions to apply for PTPTN loan repayment exemption? Okay, this one actually, when you go to the website, you can see the details for the information. Okay, should be awarded with first class bachelor degrees by the Higher Education Institute, attended full time bachelor degree program, completed program within the period stated in the loan agreement. Program completed must be aggregated by the MQA. The PTPT loan should uh, does not overlap with any other sponsorship. The application for exemption must be submitted within 12 months from the date you have uh, you, your convocation. Okay. Student must be under the B40 and M40 households income category upon graduation with effect from 1st January of 2019. Okay. B40 means your income less than 4,850 per month. Okay. M40 means uh, your income more than 4,850 and less than 10,959 per month. Okay. For any further questions about PTPTN, um, you can contact Miss Azira. Okay, this is the detail. She is based in Subang 2 campus. Okay, you can email to her. She's very attentive to the emails. Okay, you can email to her. She will assist you on the questions. Okay, please take note, huh? very important person. Okay, anything else? Uh, sorry, any questions? Any questions? No, want to go back? Don't want to go back? Want to go back, right? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, clap some more. Clap, clap. Okay. Now, that is the end of all the presentations. You guys can go back. Yay! Nice. Okay, y'all have one more thing to do. So, before y'all leave, y'all are required to scan a QR code. Okay, this is a QR code. Please scan it now. Okay. And please um, do the feedback form for the orientation. Okay? This is important for reasons. And they are very good reasons. So, please do them. Thank you. Okay, so once all of you are done with the forms, you may leave, okay? I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Please hydrate well, have good food. Uh, for the business and the communications students, please do not forget about your department-wide orientation that is happening tomorrow, okay? And yeah, welcome to Help University, everyone. I hope you have a good time here. Thank you. I want only to say thank you, you know.